Hello, welcome to Directly to You. This is episode 146. Directly to You is our podcast. We're Fanatics 4. I'm AJ of Fanatics 4. I'm joined by, I'm joined by Parker, also of Fanatics 4. Mm-hmm. We do this every weekend. You can support this show by going to youtube.com slash Fanatics 4 or twitch.tv slash Fanatics 4 and giving us $4.99 unless you're on the ladder. In which case, you can link your Amazon with your Twitch account and give us Prime Gaming on Jeff Bezos' dime, which is a subscription for you. You can join our freaking Discord and say hi to Brad or Duncan or any of the other new people that joined in. You can name the Pokemon in my Nuzlocke. That's been a good time. Hopefully uh-huh. the Pokemon you named doesn't die. Uh, I haven't One of the ones I did, did. <laughs> oh, it's true. It's true. Uh, no, oh, wait. Were you there? Were you there? I'll get into that when we talk about the games that we're playing. Okay, um, but okay, also, yeah. you get loyalty badge and you get emotes. You get game in time with us from time to time, especially when we stream um free switch keys etc etc so on and so forth you could join our discord regardless of if you give us money or jeff bezos's money or not by going to the link in the description and just hanging out dude just hanging mm-hmm. out also like for twitch when i play pokemon you could use channel points and stuff like that to do what the supporters get to do um but you, you just got to hang out and chat for the stream longer to be able to do that um anyways what games are you playing <laughs> man Literally, so many games. <laughs> oh my God, oh my um, okay, if I know sometimes people use the timestamps and stuff to to skip around, I will be talking about a couple games that I think everybody should pay attention to. So there's that. So I mean, but also do whatever you want. You can skip things if you want. Um, first of all, I'm playing. This one's not a review kind of thing. I'm playing Zelda Two for purposes. Oh nice. uh, yes. So um, yep, yep, yep. that's interesting. But I straight up like. I mean, I'm cheating in the regards that I'm playing um, the Zelda 2 Special Edition or whatever that they put on NES Online, where mm. you already have level 8 magic, level 8 hearts, and level 8 attack or whatever. Because I was like... Wow, what a cheater, dude. Oh, 100% cheating. So, <laughs> But I was like, you know what? I you're, I don't really you're care about grinding right, right now. Game. You're cheating yourself. <laughs> um something (laughs) Something like that uh yeah i mean and it's funny because like even with that like it means i'm not specifically getting good i'm not having the real experience because normally grinding would be part of that for that but i just i just don't care um Mm -hmm. i just want to kind of get you're not trying to be the number one ranked zelda 2 player dude i already am so that's why i'm skipping ahead uh, (laughs) so yeah i'm playing a little bit of that um playing some other things uh yesterday again this is not a review copy or anything i just got this because uh, at some point a short hike was on sale and i bought it and i was like i'm gonna play this at some point when i have just a while um and yesterday last yesterday evening yeah we had um i just had the evening off pretty much and i started it and it's as people have said if you haven't heard anything about a short hike um I didn't pull up. I pulled up a trailer for two of these other games to play in the background, but I didn't for this one. So um, just go look it up. But it's it's uh, you play a bird character that is like on kind of I guess summer vacation on this little mm-hmm. island, and it's literally the whole game just takes place in one afternoon, and it takes about that long to play it, just like two three hours or so, depending on how much you do or don't want to complete. And um, you're goal pretty much is to get to the top of this like mountain of this little island that you're on and again it's like super short all things considered but has amazing like super good music and the progression of it i mean i tweeted this out a little bit i'm I'm trying to keep a keep track of all the games that i'm playing in 2021 in one twitter thread um so some of this is repetition of that but it's it's one of those where like there's a lot of progression within just those couple of hours to where in the same way that like in a yeah, I don't know, in Xenoblade at the end of 45 hours or 70 hours or something, you're like, man, remember at the beginning when I couldn't do anything? There's like some of that here too. And so pretty much most of the game is like mini side quests kinds of things where someone's like, Hey, can you get this item for me that's somewhere around here? And then you'll run into it and bring it back to them and then they give you a something or other for it. Um and it's just super fun. Like it's got exploration elements from games. Yeah, I don't know, not specifically like Breath of the Wild or anything, but just that kind of feeling of like no clue where you're going. You're just wandering around and doing stuff. And then it also has like little bits of kind of Animal Crossing-y 
things, not that you're building up your island, but like tiny mechanics that resemble that a bit. And it's really funny. And again, the music is super good. So I, I really liked it. It's only like seven and a half dollars full price, I think, or eight and a half dollars, something like that. It's like super cheap. So um, if you expect to have an afternoon and want a just short, relaxing game, um, this is, that's the one for you. And there it is. So yeah, that's a short you hike. can't go on short hikes. Well, actually, I mean, you can. You can, you can <laughs> yeah. socially distance on your short hike, dude. You can. But I mean, are you going to run into the same breadth of experiences IRL as you would in a <laughs> game? Are you going to be it. a bird or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so at all. I so, think. Yeah, so that's $7 that one. Dollars is is uh, a good price to pay to be a bird for a few hours. Uh, totally is. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have to pay $60 to be a bird in in uh, Age of Calamity or Animal Crossing. So, well, you that's can't true. Be a bird and in you Animal Crossing. Not, <laughs> yeah, you can't can't be a bird in Animal Crossing. And you can't be a bird in Animal Crossing the whole I mean, in uh Breath of the Wild the whole time. That's so. true. Yeah, just some of the So time. really it's like, I mean, technically it's cheaper. I mean, no, or you're paying more. You're paying more for your for experience less percentage. Of being a bird. Like, what a deal. hour to bird, hours to bird. <laughs> that, that conversion <laughs> just throws it all out. You know what I mean? Uh, I do. So that's one of the things I'm playing. But what are you playing? Um, I'll get to some of the other ones afterwards. Okay. So I don't know. I guess you want to do. So we'll do non, uh, like content. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah related. Works. I mean, this isn't non content. I guess I'm playing games on stream. Every week, we're I'm playing Breath of the Wild. First game I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing Breath of the Wild. Uh, it's fun still. I like yep. playing Breath of the Wild. I kind of tried to, like, because the first time that I streamed, I was like, I'm just going to play this the way that I play it. Um, and then I did that the same time before. I mean, the second time, too, where I was just like, I'm just going to do what I see. <laughs> and <laughs> I kind of still want to do that because I want to try to pace it so that I beat this around the time where we know something more about Breath mm-hmm, of the Wild 2 mm-hmm. and then like try to wrap it up within enough time to like stream Age of Calamity mm-hmm. and then hopefully that aligns with Breath of the Wild 2 and then roll straight into Breath of the Wild 2 from there. Yeah. Um. So it's like, I'm trying to like balance it because I could yeah. I could be done by now. I could literally just do a Divine Beast every stream and be done mm-hmm. by the end of next month if not sooner than that but i don't want to do that <laughs> so i'm trying to figure out like like agendas uh-huh. of like, okay, this is what we're going to do today we're going to do this many shrines or whatever and then mm-hmm. so right now i'm in uh the zoro's domain uh divine beast which mm. I feel like it's still like the pace is too fast right now <laughs> like <laughs> I, I would be like if i just did that because this is this would be my second divine beast. I mm-hmm. could be done, and I don't want to be done. <laughs> so, oh, wait, which um, one did you do first? You did. The... I did Rito. Rito. Oh um, yeah, first. classic. That, yeah, because I, I, I said classic, but like I, that's that's a good one to do first for Rivali's Gale. Yeah, so. so I can yeet, dude. I'm trying to yeah, eat all over the place. Um, but also last time before that, I got into Lost Woods, and I was like in front of the the, the freaking oh, yeah, Master yeah, yeah. Sword. Uh-huh. And, but I only had four. Hearts. Yeah, I only had four <laughs> hearts because I was eating all my all my um, spirit orbs into my stamina. But mm-hmm. then I yeeted my stamina. That was the other thing. I was like looking for a child because the child's like, "Yo, there's a statue over here, man. Freaking sell your soul to the statue <laughs> to trade it for for hearts or stamina mm-hmm. or whatever." And I'm like, "All right." Um, so the child showed me a statue, and I yeeted all my stamina into my hearts, and now I have like I don't know. Was that like the like the demon hearts. statue one? Yeah, one yeah, yeah. Trades yeah, them yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. Um, Kate, Kate in the chat. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she's been helping me out. She's nice. like the, my my resident uh backseat <laughs> gamer. And I'm like, yo, Kate, what do I do? <laughs> she's the only great. one that I like consistently trust to be like, help me out. Because <laughs> uh-huh. she's not gonna be like a jerk about it. You know, I was like <laughs> it is funny, um, yeah. I mean, like you said before people backseat gaming or whatever um because i was watching you while you were doing some shrine and there was a puzzle that you were doing that in my mind i was like oh he could do it this way and i just didn't say anything and then he did it a completely different way and it worked and i was like and that's why you don't say anything in breath of yeah. the Wild, because like i mean you know it'll just happen the way it happens and it's yeah. fine <laughs> and a lot of times like 
I know, like whenever it's that way, when people mm -hmm. in the chat would gravitate to be, even if they're not going to do it like in a jerk way, but like mm -hmm. just do this, mm -hmm. that's the way I'm not trying to do it. <laughs> when yeah, I right. play this game, even like on my own, like in my first playthrough back in 2017, mm -hmm. I'm like, I know that this is what the designers intended for me to do. Mm -hmm. I'm doing anything but that. <laughs> that's always the way it, I, uh, I try to do. I don't know, like platformers or whatever is try to tell like what is the route that they think you would go first and then either run into like a key door and then have to backtrack. So I'd like to go a different way or this is the like in a Mario game or something like I can tell this is the direct route they want me to go or this is the way that's going to have a dead end. This one's the direct route. And then this other one is the one that has a secret. I always like try to find the secret one first, um, mm -hmm. but then end up, you know, like it's a little tricky sometimes to figure out what that is in some of those games. Cause, but more often than not, like it, it works out and it's, especially in Mario games, it's pretty obvious. There was like, there was one thing in breath of the wild that I was like, what do they want me to do here? Cause the thing uh -huh. that they want you to do is like a thing that, you would do to subvert that you know because it was <laughs> yeah. um which which one was it it was the uh the fire like there's the the one with the fire and stuff like that and the mm. the melting the the ice cube you got to get the ice cube through the oh. thing without melting it and oh, like yeah, the right, thing right. that like i think you're supposed to do at the last like little tower or whatever mm -hmm. is just use the uh stasis uh rune to yeet it through the fire uh -huh. So it doesn't melt. It just goes through the fire fast enough for it to not yeah. melt all the way. And that feels wrong. Like that feels <laughs> like that's not what they want. It, like it yeah. feels like they want you to like block it through like using the uh, the magnesis rune or something uh -huh. like that. But that's doesn't seem like there's a way to do that. Like you have yeah. to cheese it to do it the way that it feels like is the designed way to do it. Mm -hmm. Um so I was like, that, I was like, no, that can't be right. That can't be right. <laughs> but apparently, yeah, I was right. But for the most part, I've been trying to do it, mostly things that are like mechanically challenging in some way. Where mm -hmm. it's like, I know um, I was doing like the the one uh, shrine that Mega Man says took me three hours. Um, where you got to get the ball, you like guide the ball down the thing to like the yeah, giant yeah, boulder right, right. Uh -huh, down the thing uh -huh. so it goes into the thing. And I'm trying to like actively guide it. I don't want to like set up the the mm -hmm. uh, cryonis uh, rune and like it goes here and so that, it. that knocks that here and then I just look at it and then that's what it does. <laughs> it's like a pachinko machine or something. That's yeah, I, I was like, trying to think. Pachinko I machines. went to attack it. I went, I went <laughs> like, no, you go over there. Okay, I'm running it down there. All right, I'm here. I'm going to hit it. You know, like that's what I was trying to do. Uh -huh. Um, not so much a thing where I'm like lost, like, what do I do? I'm like, no, I know what I need to do, but I want to do it like this. Um, which brings me to the next stream, the day yeah. after that. Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Um, for the most part, Pokemon, it's Pokemon. Like I, I yeah. know I play Pokemon, dude. Um, but I got to, so I have, I have like, I don't know if this is like a, a, a regular Nuzlocke rule or whatever, but I have like set rules of like, this is what I'm doing. And because I've never seen like a Sword and Shield Nuzlocke, there's certain things that are like mm -hmm. specific to that, like wild area. Can't right. do that. Yeah. Only go in there where I have to only catch one Pokemon per time I'm there per area within mm -hmm. the wild area. Um, sort of stuff but another rule that I have is I can't heal during battles so mm, I did okay. I did the Milo gym yeah um, and prior to that I have no like all my flying type Pokemon died for one reason mm -hmm. or another they're all dead every single one of them due to you and Mega Man I have a grass starter I have a huge <laughs> huge huge grass weakness <laughs> slash and like general inability right, to beat yeah. grass types um, another rule that I have no excessive grinding. I could have mm -hmm. grinded. Yeah, I was. Right. I even said I was like, I'm gonna go to like level 20 because that's around where his Pokemon are. Right. But I was yeah. like, eh, no, that's not fun. It's not fun to watch people grind. So I was like, I'm not doing that. Uh, so I didn't grind. Um, I lost. I want to say I had five. Had five. Four or five Pokemon. Five. I Pokemon. wasn't watching on the stream, but I watched the video of that part afterwards. I think, and you had five. Yeah. I have five Pokemon. I lost three of them. They're dead. Rip, dude. Um, specifically, the the controversy is Grimhane. Mm -hmm. I kill I killed Grimhane. Mm, you did. Um, but it wasn't my fault, dude. Like he no. had to go. Like yeah. what else? He just wasn't I, strong it, enough. Sorry, Grim. exactly. We love you, like, but you were not strong. Enough. What am I supposed to do? Lose Thwacky? Like if I lose Thwacky, I'm <laughs> aft. 
Like right, if, I, yeah. if I lose Thwacky, and especially mm-hmm. if I lose, uh, the, he's Dreadnought now. If I lost mm-hmm. Dreadnought, mm-hmm. like Dreadnought is the MVP right now. He's my yeah. best Pokemon, bar none. Mm-hmm. Um, my worst Pokemon is the Babby. I almost lost the Babby, but I saved them. I saved them because Chat would have been big mad if I if I would have <laughs> I would have let the Babby is in um Toxicity. Or yeah, if Toxic- I let, if I let Tassel die, I would have never recovered from that. <laughs> he really does suck for so long. Like I he does. I was He's on so when bad. you mentioned that, and like yeah, I remember playing with him, and he it was like just what a bad electric type for so long. <laughs> You know, but I mean, by the time it's like, toxicity, it's like, okay, yeah, you're doing yeah, some stuff I feel now. like that's common, though, because the same thing happens with Shinx. Like, Shinx sucks for yeah. so long. And then when he finally learns an electric type, it's like it was Spark, which mm-hmm. at that time was like the Nuzzle equivalent. Like, right. at least Nuzzle, yeah. like, I feel like Nuzzle is significantly more, like, useful than Spark. It because it paralyzes every time, right? It's guaranteed to paralyze. Okay. Exactly. But Spark's but it's like not. Like 20 so it's damage like, or something. Yeah, but, garbage. like, if I get the paralysis, it's fine. I can Right, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, and that's what I was, like, trying to do. I was like, okay, I'm going to, I want to try mm-hmm. to, like, expedite this process and actually have <laughs> Toxel level up faster so i'm putting him in battles and stuff and i put him in the battle with the gym leader and i was like he's fine he'll do fine i'm gonna freaking nuzzle and it'll be good like he'll take him out it's it's okay um but he almost died he almost got after but he did uh. he's fine everything's fine <laughs> Toxel lived um so yeah i got through that gym Toxel. and then at the end of that stream i got to the puzzle like i got to the next gym uh mm-hmm. with nessa and I was doing the puzzle or whatever. And then I got stuck at the last part because I was like, like I knew again, there's another situation like that happens a lot on streams where it's like, I'm focused on so many different things that there's a mm-hmm. lot of stuff that like to you looks like it's right in front of my face. And it's like, why can't he see that? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and like yeah. in hindsight, I was like, yeah, I mean, it was right here. Um, but at the time I didn't see that and I didn't know where I had to go. I knew what I needed to do. I knew it was like, okay, I got to freaking get red to get out of here so I can get the mm-hmm. blue so I can go straight through this thing. But I didn't see where I needed to go to mm-hmm. activate that. So I was like, okay, I got to go. I got to get out of here. I can't, my brain's dead. I, it's not happening. Yeah. It's surprising how painful it is to what, like his, uh, so Ashley's been playing new super lucky's tale and she was doing a puzzle that, um, that like all things considered, it's, it's a kind of puzzle that I've had to do in games a ton, but watching her do it was so painful because <laughs> just because like I was, I was trying to not help and like, I mean, not be unhelpful, but just like not, you know, take over or anything like that. But it's hard for some reason to just know what the thing is and then see it not be done. And I wish I could switch that part of my brain to just be off or whatever. But yeah. um, I, I think that people are just generally bad at uh, sympathizing <laughs> because yeah, it's right. like you, you're only like hyper aware of you now. Mm-hmm. you're not thinking about exactly. like what was i like when i was in this position and didn't right, understand exactly. what to do whether that be your first pokemon game or whatever mm-hmm. you know like the thing that got you to the point where it's like oh th- this is what i do in mm-hmm. this situation on top of the fact that it's like th- there's another layer of like okay yeah. but like also streaming or whatever you know like that sort of thing mm-hmm. that nobody thinks about but it's whatever it's fine i did it off stream and i was like okay we're done I'm, <laughs> i did it for this and that's what i think i want to do for like the um the divine beast because i ended it a similar way when i was on the divine beast I was like i don't know what i need to do here and i like i'm just done so i'm gonna like do yeah. like quick reminders for myself where it's like oh okay that's how this works before the stream starts and then mm-hmm. go into doing it i do wish something i mean we'll talk about this i'm sure some other time in more depth but like I I wish there were more puzzles in Pokemon games that like like cuz even the early Pokemon games like Victory Road was pretty puzzly, you know, like it's not the best or anything. Um but I think that kind of thing was always enjoyable and def- like I feel like Ness's puzzle is pretty much the only one in Sword and Shield. Um I think and like, one, but it's like there might it's be like the yeah. most puzzly puzzle. Right. Where it's not just going in a straight line. Because uh-huh. most puzzles, even the older ones, are just like do this and then do that. Right, and exactly. Like, solving the puzzle is as simple as like there's a trainer over there that I got to yeah. battle. So clearly that's the way that I got Right, exactly. And that's <laughs> the thing is like I think it also, because it's also for kids and stuff, it shouldn't be, they, they shouldn't, um, you know, wall off important game content so much as like extras and you know yeah. fun stuff i think would be fun to have behind puzzles just because like i don't know yeah i think puzzles are a good part of a grander experience in a lot of regards but. 
As long as it feels like it belongs for me. Yes. Because there's right. a lot of times in games where it's like, this is just here to be arbitrarily mm-hmm. difficult right. to pad the length. Mm-hmm. Um, if it yeah. feels like, oh, okay, this is something that I would be doing as a Pokemon trainer. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, okay, yeah, put that in there. Uh-huh. Um, but I mean, like, I think to me, the cave thing, like a lot of people were like sad that the Sword and Shield caves don't take 30 billion hours to get through. And it's like, yeah, that's because you're not running at Zubats every two seconds. <laughs> like, right. I don't want that. I don't need that back. <laughs> right. No, for sure. Yeah, I think um, the it's it, it can add to some of the mis- like, I don't know, the mystical whatever stuff behind mm-hmm. it. Kind of like Koroks in um, Breath of the Wild, where yeah. it just feels like, oh, that's just a thing that's there but like yeah right. in the pokemon world for some reason there would be uh you know some little puzzle yeah. thing there for um, sure as an additive thing i'm down yes, but right. it, like walling your progress behind yeah. stuff like that unless it Agreed. feels like it makes sense within mm-hmm. the lore and all that yep. stuff like, like i mean i guess in some regards you know blaine's gym i mean it's not it's mm-hmm. quizzes it's not puzzles but yeah. even that is like it's quizzes within the context of like he's giving you a quiz like right. all right that checks out you know um but yeah some other times that might not work as well <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was another game and then mm-hmm. also i played smash it wasn't as fun yeah because <laughs> he hates smash, I, so I, there's I, yep. clearly yeah clearly <laughs> um yeah okay well cool we can get into some of the more a little bit content to games uh i talked about this one a little bit last week but i played more of scott pilgrim versus the world game and um i wanted to talk about it again because mm-hmm. it's i'm enjoying my time more and more with it the oh more yeah I, I got like, i have things to say about this uh, i'm I curious things to say <laughs> about scott pilgrim versus the world the game yes yes tell me more uh, <laughs> okay uh, i mean you, you talk, say you talk you, okay you, you want me to talk first i'll talk uh, wait i think you should talk about the game so I played a little bit of the game but. okay gotcha i um i'm enjoying it the, so a couple things I didn't realize for one thing, I think I realized as you level up, you get new moves because that happens Mm -hmm. fairly early on. Um, So that's good. I didn't realize that leveling up did more, I guess, than give you new moves. Um, And as you level up, you also get better stats. So you move Mm -hmm. better and you hit harder and you can take more punches and stuff. So that's all stuff that I was like, oh, I, okay. I need to focus more on or just, you know, uh, knowing that I won't always walk as slowly as you do right at the beginning, for example, is a thing where like at first I was like, man, this just feels so slow, but now leveling up feels like, you know, a big deal. Um, and also the way that buying items works is more than just like, like when you buy items in the game, they'll typically increase your, you know, your stats as well as, um, just your, temporary health and all that kind of stuff so i thought they were just doing temporary health and i was like why is there so many items if they're just doing temporary health and this cheap one is getting me all of the health that i need but then realizing that it does more things to stats overall makes it you know uh makes me understand all that better so all that to say um i'm now level 13 maybe with scott and i'm on level five i believe um, and I'm trying to save up my money to pay off Scott's late fees because apparently that's a thing that gets you a lot of, um, there's good things that happen from that. I'm not sure what it is, but mm, we'll do that. So, right, so yeah, all that to say, I think like the way I'm seeing that the loot works a little bit better and like how to interact with it to get a better experience is helping me to enjoy it more and stuff. And like, um, yeah, the RPG elements within the general beat up is fun and i'm enjoying and i like a lot of my new moves too i pretty much fight mm. completely differently now than i did at the beginning where like i fight more aerially where like now i've got a um like a jump and then essentially like a down b kind of attack you like know. a dive kick yes the dive kick and there's another one the same kind of thing like kick kick in the air and then land on people mm. so i just do that kind of stuff a lot um so the broadening move set is is really fun and i still enjoy you know the music and et cetera, et cetera. so that's what i was gonna say what were you gonna say <laughs> uh i watched so i never watched this movie ever before okay um i watched the movie and i <gasps> felt i don't i don't get it <laughs> and it's like and it's like it's like i get it that like uh-huh. me watching it now it's it's like the kind of thing where it's like if i watch dragon ball now i would hate it I mean, right not dragon, yeah, ball. Yeah. dragon ball z i would be like this is yeah. stupid i don't like it's you like, mean the dragon ball movie from 2009 of course yeah. no i mean like dragon ball z like all that crap 
Yeah. Like, because it's like, it gets to the certain, I mean, this isn't related to Scott. Pilgrim, right. But like with Dragon Ball Z, it's like, oh, okay. Up to Frieza, that all feels like well thought out. Mm-hmm. Even though it it was like in hindsight where it's like, oh, and he's an alien instead of just a monkey, you know, like that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It still all felt connected <laughs> and like intentional. Yeah. Um, but after that, it's like, okay, so this is just Cell. Like, I mean, this is just Frieza again. That's Cell. Okay, Frieza, but he has all the other fighters' DNA. Cool, cool, mm-hmm. cool. All is right, Cell next, the oh, purple and white one? No, he's know. the green. Is that Frieza? He, that's Frieza. Yeah, okay. Cell's the green bug man. Okay. And yeah. then Boo is the big mm-hmm. fat slash yeah. muscular slash short child pink man with the antenna <laughs> on his head. Um, he's made and, of bubble gum. Yeah, I mean, more or less. Um, cool. So, and Boo is just literally Cell, but he likes candy. Like, <laughs> it's like, like all the villains in Dragon yeah. Ball are like, it's the last one, but unrelated to I still, for the same reasons you're saying with this too i wish that i'd grown up on dragon ball z but i did you could and, you would like it you know yeah I think I, that if you grew up with it you yes. would be able to like look mm-hmm. past all that stuff and be like it's yep. stupid but like or not even think it's stupid because there's a lot of people like dragon ball is a classic and like back in its time and all uh-huh, that other uh-huh. bs um but yeah no uh scott pilgrim i was just like this movie part of it is like it very much so did not age well there's a lot of stuff in this i was like did they really just say that <laughs> is that oh, a thing that they i'm said? curious what things um, like things that now would be kind of politically incorrect sort yeah, of things. yeah yeah that sort of stuff yeah um also it's like it just the the weird kind of power fantasy of it all of like mm-hmm. this dude like are all <laughs> these girls are fighting over him <laughs> like that sort of situation uh-huh. also it just, like i don't know it, it feels kind of like although i get that it's like from somebody that's in mm-hmm. uh, in on the culture and all that stuff it feels like a uh, pixels sort of thing of like ooh, they said mm-hmm. video game thing that uh-huh. i like <laughs> or they played the video game song sound right chime or whatever Ooh, cool. Uh, ha ha, funny. <laughs> they it's said funny because like, I think like you said too, a lot of those things, now that it's as big as it is and that so many of the actors in it are as big as they are, yeah. it all feels like extra, I don't know. Like it, it feels even more like that, the pixels mm-hmm. kind of thing where it's like right, right, right. from the well, top for me, down. It doesn't even have anything to do with that. Like even right. if I see a small like YouTube outfit or whatever, and mm-hmm. they're making skits and like their joke is just like Mario. Ha 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 ha. I'm like, <laughs> this is stupid. Like there's nothing funny about it. You're not making jokes mm-hmm. using the culture. You're it's the big bang theory effect. The culture as a joke, you know, uh-huh. and that's, mm-hmm. it's just not funny. Um, it, there's a lot of things like that and i separate from that that's not me like poo poo and people that like it i understand Mm -hmm. that i get that it's a different thing growing up in that and then seeing that like oh there are movies that Mm -hmm. like this is a movie that felt like it was coming from people that cared there's not Mm -hmm. a whole lot of other like media that felt like this and all that stuff Mm -hmm. so like basically this is me saying zeon i get it i get you (laughs) but for me right now as a 20 seven year how old am i 27 uh-huh. year i forgot last year it's supposed to not count but like legitimately i'm 27 right, as a 27 yeah. year old that this is the first time i've ever watched this movie all the way through not for me not for me dude. <laughs> yeah it's funny too because like i i mean so at the time that i watched it i wasn't super into video games like i had a you know history with it right but you were into like the band culture the band culture part of it for sure and i mean just like you know the rom-com or comedy parts even that like i get that you know so it's funny because yeah yeah, it's a lot of those things for for me would have felt like i don't know it's it's interesting in any case i still it's still one of mine and ashley's favorite movies of all time but i can also totally see you know where you're coming from on that side Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. that's funny yeah. It is so, funny uh, with this game, though, that, like, I don't feel like, and maybe it's just not, it's not trying to tell much story outside of, like, hey, it's the boss from the thing. It's the mm-hmm, one boss you have right. to fight, you know? Um, so that that's part of why I was, watched it, because it's, like, I know that it's doing that. It's, like, oh, mm-hmm. it's the the guy, you know? Yeah. Like, it's not telling me it's the guy, but it's the guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's, like, so, you know, <laughs> like, um, 
because I was like, I want to play the game, but like, I I feel like it's just a generic beat 'em up if I just play the game and I don't understand any of the references apart right. from yeah. the same like base level, like it's a Zelda thing mm-hmm. <laughs> references that it makes. And it's like, no, there's definitely some of the references in the game that I don't know if they're things from the books that I don't know or if they're just like things in the store. Um, like the shops, the some of the items will be like, you know, the Clash at Demon Head CD. And that, obviously, I get because that's, you know, a big plot point or whatever. But then they'll have some other CD that's some other band that, like, maybe that was in the background at some point, but I'm not really sure. Like, so maybe they made that up for the game or they pulled it from the books or even from the movie, but it was, like, super in the background. So mm-hmm. I am curious about that kind of thing. But um, it does, like, outside of the kind of overall trappings of, like, it's it is scott pilgrim it doesn't necessarily feel specifically like scott pilgrim at the same time if you know what i mean mm-hmm. so. and maybe that's another layer that i'm missing yeah. the comics mm-hmm. i didn't even look into that i was just yeah, like all same. right let me, let me i have netflix <laughs> it's on netflix <laughs> let me watch this yeah try to understand mm. um i don't i mean i do but i don't you know what yeah. i mean <laughs> oh yeah no, we we do love that movie though. I think even outside of any of the reference referential stuff, I think just the the script writing and the characters and the editing, those kind of, like just the movie movie part of it, I think we also just enjoy that, which that's also just different strokes for different folks and what. Yeah. Cause for me, like even that part, like like the editing is mm-hmm. it feels super campy for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. So what else <laughs> are you playing though? So that's one of the things. Cyber I Shadow. I'm playing Cyber Shadow. It's dope. I like this game a lot. I completely understand why Yacht Club Games published it. It's mm-hmm. not made by Yacht Club Games. Right. But it feels Mechanical like Head that. Studio, yeah. something like that. Mechanical something. Something like that. We should probably look that up. Okay. Um, but uh hold on. So this game very much so feels like uh shovel knight in the way that it's like oh okay so like if this game was made in the like early 90s this like this could exist in that time period and it's like obviously like Mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. a technical level this exact game couldn't (laughs) but it's very much so made with the same like sensibilities and like the knowledge that we've learned on games like that since then Mm -hmm. um it feels very good to play the progression's good the the whole thing of like unlock like um the part that i like am on now or not on but like that i just got past i got like my first little like power up or whatever where it's like it extends the range of your slash Mm -hmm. um and then that like makes it it's like the the whole uh zelda thing of like i got a boomerang so now i can cut the ropes (laughs) with the boomerang it's like that sort of thing it's like i have more reach on my thing so it makes it easier to beat this type of enemy on this Mm -hmm. stage and to do this platforming challenge um and that sort of thing uh this was something that i mean we were talking about it just before where it's like i like this is the sort of thing that like I would have streamed if it if I could have before mm-hmm. the game came out, but now that the game's out, it would be very annoying to stream it because like I'm just trying to figure it out. Like I very much so play these type of games like Shovel Knight and like um kind of like fighting games where I'm like labbing stuff. I'm like, what is the range on this? How can mm-hmm. I like what is the most like optimal jump and that sort of situation? I'm not like trying to win with mm-hmm. the like when I'm playing through it, I'm trying to figure out how do I do the thing. So I'll I definitely, yeah, I get exactly. Yeah. I get that a lot from like, I, I, pretty much I'll try to be figuring out not, not literally speed strats, but kind of speed strats as I go. So it's like, I'll go a little bit of the way die. And like, technically I could beat a level if I just went slow and steady, but it's not as much fun to do that. So I yeah, want to exactly. like figure it out how to do it like the more fluid and you know fun way but that would be awful to watch (laughs) yeah exactly um and yacht club sent me uh the last expansion the uh king of cards expansion Mm -hmm. for shovel knight um and i streamed that for a little bit and like max was like man you're really bad at shovel knight it's like no i'm just trying to figure it out dude like (laughs) like i'm playing this game how i would normally play it where it's like Mm -hmm. okay how does this character move and like what are their attacks like and stuff like that so mean he is dude (laughs) terrible so mean dude uh but but yeah like i'm just laughing so yeah. so the, i'm still kind of in that phase where i'm like just jumping around saying like okay what does this do i want to like so i can at the end of my playthrough i'm doing like the sickest stuff dude i'm like <laughs> freaking it's gonna be clips clips 
all returns. It's a dope game, though. Yeah. I'm so ready to play more of it. I want more. And you'll hear more in-depth thoughts and more, like, well-thought-out <laughs> review-ish sort of things next time we do, like, a any games you should play on the eShop sort of thing. Because mm-hmm. I can already say, like, it's a good game. If you like games like The Messenger and, like, you know, Shovel Knight, obviously, you'll like this game. I do appreciate with games like this and Shovel Knight and other ones that they're doing things that are very, like you said, would fit on the NES or SNES for other games or whatever, but aren't um, limited to them in the same mm-hmm. ways. We're like, it sounds like this is still staying pretty close to it in terms of like all of these pixels could show up on this game screen at once, but probably they wouldn't be this color palette right. because it wouldn't exist. And it's, it wouldn't it's have this of, music and it probably wouldn't mm-hmm. actually be able to run without stuttering a ton or that kind yeah. of a thing, you know? And that's the thing. Like, it's kind of like the Mandela effect sort of thing of like, or like <laughs> Wind yeah. Waker HD where it's like, the game mm-hmm. always looked like this, right? <laughs> you know, like Wind Waker, sure, yeah. it looks great, but it looks nowhere near as good as Wind Waker HD does. Yeah. It's kind of like that. It's like this feels way better than those games do I've never thought of practice. that that's funny yeah uh but that that's how it is like it's mm-hmm. the sort of thing that people play it and they're like this is how it looked and felt in my head right but like in practice it, it's not that yeah <laughs> yeah going back to like even playing like mario one um there's i mean now it's also because it's hd screens and stuff but like because it was on crts there's the like screen tearing or whatever on mm-hmm. the on the right hand side of the screen that's so painful that it exists but like it's just there because it was always there that was hard coded in or whatever um but you just didn't notice it that's a different thing but it is mm-hmm. still a nuisance of sorts yeah nice because i, I, I mean, haven't played it at all but yeah that's a fun. lot of games are like designed with those limitations in mind like they look mm-hmm. better on crt screens because they mm-hmm. were made for that spec yep it's kind of like something that uh we were talking about I was talking about this on stream um, with like, because somebody brought up, they don't like how uh, people like are so harsh on games that are older and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. And it's like, it's like, yeah, but like a lot of those games were designed with that in mind, right? Like they were designed Mm -hmm. to that spec. And at the time they were like, man, this is the best game. It looks so realistic. And five years later, it looks like garbage. And that's because (laughs) they tried to be something that at the end of the day, they're not. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, it looks so great rather than just trying to make something that looked and played well like yeah. one waker like right she's island you, like you know there's so mm-hmm. many like timeless examples of games that just tried to make a good a game mm-hmm. um, i mean at this point like i don't know breath of the wild versus probably a number of more like graphically intensive games. <laughs> well yeah but i was gonna say of like 2017 even where it's like mm-hmm. they look kind of dated now and it's only been three or four years yeah yeah no that's yep. cool though i'm uh i haven't played it at all yet um but i've got your copy on there so maybe i'll try it out at some point i haven't played some other games so i've been playing two games uh one from devolver digital and i'm going to share my screen and play a trailer in the background test out how this works uh where is the share screen button work it's on do the thing the there it is there it is the nice. screen was showing up in a place okay um so yeah we'll see if this works here's this in the background Great the game's called olia um i think it's how it's pronounced but you play this, it's uh, like super uh, pixel graphics, but like, I don't think this specifically actually was, this wasn't in the game. This is just a trailer bit for it. Is this is why I like how they, show? like freaking Mega Man, like the Mega Man box art looks nothing like Mega yeah. Man sort of thing. I mean, this is definitely, yeah, showing this right now. Um, for anybody who's just listening, this is, this looks great and all but yeah this is not what the actual game looks like <laughs> is this what the game feels like Do you, like is this your head cannon <laughs> um i mean yeah a little bit okay here's what the game actually looks like there we go i'll have this playing in the background so i'm gonna mute it for myself there we go um so it's like pixel art kind of stuff and it does switch between more like this you know like um some little cut scenes in pixel art but then most of it you're playing as uh a guy who's jumping around. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by looking at that, so I'm just not going to. You're playing as a guy who's uh, at some point pretty early on, you get a harpoon that you're able to throw it and then um, like dash to it kind of thing. And that ends up being a mechanic throughout the whole game. 
and the atmosphere okay here's the harpoon there on screen I thought he was a razor head from I he my, looks so <laughs> much like a razor head from my hero <laughs> game. Yeah, I the same thing. Um, but the whole time you're in this like uh kind of underworldy, really eerie kind of place, and you're trying to find these three keys to open a door to like come out of this underworld area is mm. kind of the whole premise. It's not a super long game, like it probably took me uh, probably five hours or so to to complete. And I didn't 100% it, but like I got a, a decent amount of secrets. Um, and I was wondering at first if it was a Metroidvania, and it's not. But there's a couple areas that you can go back to a little bit. But all in all, I just thought it was, the combat's really fun. Um, the I think the chucking the harpoon and and all that is uh, works out really well. And the music is really good. And the atmosphere especially is just like super consistent. And... Um, even though the story's not super deep, like mo most of the time you're trying to save this girl, I guess, and get all of you and all your people out of this underworld that you were on a boat with. And, but you always know where you want to go and what you want to do. And it's fun. So there's some mm -hmm. thoughts on that. I, I very much enjoyed it. Um, I would highly recommend it to anybody that likes kind of like action games. How um, much is it? Uh, $15. Nice. I do nice. declare. So for me, I yeah, I would, I would definitely say that it was it was it would be worth that um, for me. Obviously, I got a review code, so I, I you know, that's different. But um, no, I'd pay fifteen dollars for it for sure. Yeah, I enjoyed yeah, it a lot. Fifteen dollars isn't bad. Nope. Um, but yeah, it's a developer digital game, and all their games are pretty consistently yeah, good. I still have not mm -hmm. th i think the closest game that i've gotten from devolver digital is like yeah this game is, eh. <laughs> is um what is that game called the banana game my friend oh, pedro, my friend pedro. <laughs> i was very meh on that game oh but yeah that's not to say which is sad because that one looks really. cool yeah you know? it looks so sick i was like <laughs> so ready for that game but it yep. didn't click for me nope so but yeah alia is um is very enjoyable i gotta check out the freaking john wick game too I don't know if that's good. They, I think I got a code for that. For the John oh. Wick game. We're coming to Switch? Um, it's already out on Switch, I think. Oh. I got a code there for that a so while There were so many ago. games that came out just this week, like the last week of January. Because when I was looking to make my – and maybe it's just that there's so many games coming out all the time and I just don't look at the eShop all the time. But when I was making my February games video, <laughs> there were just so many games. I was like, man, I wish this came out like three days later so I could talk about it in this video. <laughs> um and i probably could have been like also coming out the week before that but i didn't so but one of the games that i did talk about in that one and i'm going to do this again share my screen okay so um this is a game called glyph this comes out on monday i believe is that right yeah monday the first of february uh this is one that i did include in that video and i haven't pressed play on the trailer yet so that i don't get too distracted before i start to press play it's a three platformer that uh, i've talked about wonderling a couple of times on here and this mm -hmm. is different in mechanics for sh by a long shot to that but similar in in some regards to me because it's um like not you pretty much get most of your mechanics right at the beginning of the game. Like I haven't finished this one, but it's one of those that like, I'll probably play a lot while I'm watching other stuff because it's like fun to do, but it's not like there's a whole lot of story or anything. It's just, a, you know, a platformer. Um, but getting the collectibles is pretty challenging. And like there's, it's a low barrier of entry, but like high learning curve as far as like getting good at it. So you play this little, um, like mechanical sphere ball thing that um, is like kind of a scarab sort of insecty thing. Um, so you kind of combine uh, jumping, like you can double jump and like smash on the ground, which boosts you back up and fly a little bit. And then that's pretty much your whole move set and using that and different stuff in the world mechanics to, you know, get around various different places and try to collect items. Like it says on the screen, collect. Yeah, I can I can see how this is. like kind of like the Spider Man sort of movement or whatever, where it's like mm -hmm. in the beginning of the game, it's like you don't look anything like how Spider Man <laughs> is, <laughs> but you start to understand like okay, I press mm -hmm. that and then that goes into that and that you know it flows better as you get better, yeah. not so much directly by like abilities that you get or whatever. 
Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's definitely, it is like getting better at it and um, you unlock more levels and stuff like that. I think this is a boss that I haven't gotten to or anything yet, but definitely that's a big part of it is just like learning how to kind of put those things together in the exact timing. It feels mm -hmm. a lot like getting the Mario hat throw down Yeah. Yep. in terms of that's like, another good example of um, you know, it's not particularly hard to do it, but it takes a while to kind of um, really, you know, master the timing and all that stuff. So that's, that's something that I'm working on now. There's a couple levels that um, I've gotten all the, or there's, a, there's a couple levels that are timed levels where it's like you get the faster you do the level, the more gems you get and the like lowest level or the lowest time you can do pretty much by doing what we were saying before, where like, you know, slow and steady, just one platform at a time. But then mm -hmm. the fastest times you have to like, it's a, it's a sonic kind of thing because you have to use yeah. your momentum and like really string it all together. Um, and figuring out the ways that you can do that in different environments is, is challenging, but fun. So, um, yeah. And it's, it's not too punishing either. Like all of the, uh, like the coins that you saw there in the, in the game, as you collect them, you, um, like if you die, you already collected them. But there's some mm -hmm. other ones that are like harder collectibles to get that you do have to collect it and get to the end with it. So there's, you know, depending on what the thing is, um, changes whether or not you'll get to keep it and stuff. So again, very much like Sonic in the momentum kinds of things. And that's all the games we're playing. But speaking of Sonic. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it the, from the second you said Sonic the first uh -huh. time. <laughs> Which is, it was good because I had already, um, like, in playing it, I was like, this is kind of like Sonic in the momentum kind of thing. Which does make me think, I wonder if I would like Sonic more than I've, I just haven't given Have it a lot Have you never tried chance. Sonic at all? I've, uh, no, a little bit. Like, Have you tried really Sonic Mania? A little bit. Nope, haven't tried Sonic Mania. I'd so, try Sonic. I probably should. Yeah. But no, I haven't. Tried I mean, it. I got it. You can just download it. I, I probably will mm -hmm. at some point. So, so yeah, speaking of Sonic, um, yep, you know Sonic. more about this than I do because I didn't look into it all that much. But um, the voice actor for Sonic is stepping down. Um, yeah. I forgot his well, name already. It does not sound like he's he's uh stepping down. <laughs> at oh. least like it, does, it doesn't seem like that from how he like positioned it or whatever. Um, cause like in his statement, he said, well, 10 years was an amazing run onwards to new zones. Much love to the fans who've been so kind. It's been an honor. Uh, it, it, like, it doesn't really seem like he's like, I'm done. <laughs> it, it seems more like they're going in a different direction. Huh? Okay. That is a little bit different then. So, which was like, kind of mm -hmm. to break down the fourth wall a little bit, which right. is why I was like, I don't know, maybe we should talk about this <laughs> because, <laughs> because it, it seems like they're trying to go in a different place for right. Sonic and some, I'm sure he's still going to be like, yeah, I'm Sonic, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. freaking, but I, don't I mean, know, especially like because like, yeah, I don't know. That seems like a pretty, not easy gig in that it's like easy to do it, but in terms of like, you know, whenever there's a Sonic game, it's a reliable gig on his side mm -hmm. so that he wouldn't have yeah, a been ton doing of reason. Yeah, he's been doing it for years. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like Charles Martinet doing Mario stuff, it's like, yeah. you know, you Granted, just- there's been like a lot of Sonics, like freaking- Right, Julio yes. White. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the only one that I could think of by name. <laughs> but there's been more than that. Uh -huh. um, so, so well, yeah, I mean, what do you think this, this implies then in that case? I think that they're going to reboot Sonic. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, we kind of know that they're doing it for sure. As far as like, there's a Netflix series that they confirm that's coming out next year. There's supposed mm -hmm. to be multiple games that are coming out. At least year. one more movie for sure. The 30th anniversary. Yeah, at least. What, well, the movie's different, which the movie is another interesting wrinkle, right? Like mm -hmm. maybe they're trying to consolidate. Maybe yep. they want to get, get Ben Schwartz uh, in ben there. Schwartz on everything. I, don't I mean, know if at the capital for that. Sorry, Roger but, uh, Craig Smith, but like, I'd be so down for that because Ben Schwartz <laughs> is the best. <laughs> Rip, dude. I wonder if he would do it, yeah. or if they like, like if they have to pay him what yeah, they have to right. pay him for the movie. You know, I mean, well, so, I, I don't know if Sega is pay, like Paramount is paying them. Right. I don't know how the the breakdown for that. Is. To be honest, I could see it be like a prestige, like um. Because again, it's probably not that much work for the individual things for uh, for Ben Schwartz. You know, like where it wouldn't. Because like, you know, like the freaking Sonic Forces of the world, like mm -hmm. they're going to have 
like a decent amount of lines. It's probably yeah. not gonna be like like four thousand pages or whatever, <laughs> but it's gonna be like a decent amount of stuff. You uh-huh. know? But I guess I'm thinking like they don't have to get him in a specific studio to do it to be able to yeah. So what the the analogy I'm thinking of specifically is that after the Scooby Doo live action movie in two thousand <laughs> three which by the way amazing movie if anybody hasn't watched it it's surprisingly it's um uh was James it like, Gunn? or was it the second i don't know if it was the second. one of those movies was like supposed to be like rated r or it was the like first that. one yeah it was gonna be it was because okay. james gunn from guardians of the galaxy directed it and he wanted it to be a rated r or at least rated t like a heavy t or something like that and mm. um they and obviously they said no. This but is there the were a movie bunch of where specific Scooby things. says F. I was going to say the word, but I don't know yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> um. So, but yeah, Shaggy Matthew Lillard, who played Shaggy in that movie, became Shaggy from then on out. Like since then, up until literally, the only thing he hasn't been Shaggy in, to my understanding, is the Scoob movie. Where and this this is an aside, but sucks. I think. It, um. Will Forte was asked to do it, which Will Forte is great. That's fine. But Matthew Lillard wasn't even told about it. It was just like... Yo, that's some solid snake stuff, dude. Yeah, that's- and that's like super lame that he found out that the movie was happening when the like trailer came out or something. And it was like, Will Forte doing Shaggy. And same goes for Velma that they had somebody else do it and didn't tell the lady who'd been doing it for like 22 years or something ridiculous. So, mm-hmm. But all that to say, he's, you know, Matthew Lillard's like, a big time actor, I guess, but um, but with this, maybe because it's smaller but more consistent work, he asks for less pay. So similarly, mm-hmm. maybe Ben Schwartz with Sonic would be the same kind of a thing where like, you know, it's it'll just keep paying the bills, but he doesn't yeah. need as much for each. And it could thing. also just be like it's Sonic, dude. Like, yeah, right, exactly. It's like a prestige <laughs> thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So who hmm. knows? Maybe that's what they're doing. Um, but I think my bet is because this is Sonic. <laughs> I think it's good. like they're freaking gonna do even grittier. This is gonna be Sonic 06 too. It's like freaking people die in this. Oh, no. <laughs> Sonic gets stabbed. <laughs> Here's the question, man. What if they're like, okay, Sonic uh, forces didn't work because it's too, you know, it's too similar to something, something, something. Um, but I Breath of the Wild know, reinvented the way that. And yeah. so, like, what if they literally Breath of the Wild, open world Sonic, and like Sonic can climb everything? <laughs> it would truly be the worst game. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, it might be great in and it of itself, cool, but it wouldn't be but... a Sonic game, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, but that's the thing, though. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Yeah. You know how to make a good Sonic game? Don't make a make Sonic a Sonic game. game that's not a Sonic game. <laughs> uh, reinvent what being a Sonic game even means, especially mm-hmm. in three D. Like, make a two D Sonic game because, like, there's good two D Sonic games, and there's like right. arguably okay three D Sonic games. I wouldn't go as far as to say that any of the Sonic games are good without mm-hmm. asterisk. Like Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure Two are fine, I guess, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't call them good um because like any game that like people's defense for when it breaks is that like it broke because you're playing it wrong mm-hmm. is like that's no that's a no-go dude that's a bad game <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry but but yeah no they they still have yet in my mind to make a good mm-hmm. sonic game they're not all bad but none of them are good <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> no, right. I mean, I don't from experience, but I, I trust you. Um, mm-hmm. and so I think I, as I was thinking too about Sonic stuff, I think one of the things that, and like, t- correct me if I'm wrong on this, but uh, a thing that I don't know that I would still love about it is that I like games like, you know, Donkey Kong Country, for example, is also a momentum-based game in a different mm-hmm. way, but like, you know, similar in some regards, much more so at least than Mario is. And, um, but it's typically more like momentum sections, whereas I think Sonic still feels like ideally, you know, to get, to be rewarded with speed, it's momentum for learning the whole yeah. level. I, I'd say all of it is either momentum or chances to gain that momentum. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Donkey Kong, there, there are like sections that are more of like reprieves. <laughs> like, yeah, right, exactly. And I enjoy that because it means that like, I, I don't know. I like the checkpoint kind of thing because then I can learn this one section but not have to do the whole thing perfectly for it to feel good. Because that's mm-hmm. the thing is like, if it feels like if you play Sonic wrong, 
yes, you'll get to the end of the level, but it doesn't necessarily mm, feel good, at least like in my garbage, experience. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas Donkey Kong, even if you... That's the, I mean, that's, that's great, part so. of the intended design of like, it's right. supposed to feel bad because it makes you want to do better the next mm-hmm. time and blah, blah, blah. And it makes Instead, doing it, makes it makes right feel even like, better. And blah, uh-huh. exactly, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, that type of design of like intentionally making people feel bad when they don't do when they don't play the game, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's bad design, IMO, yeah. but you know. Yep. So what do you expect from a Sega in terms of Sonic then? Considering all I think of they're this, I think they next? are trying to figure out 3D Sonic. I I still think even Sega knows that they have have yet to do that. Um, and I think the reception for Sonic Mania is even more proof of that because like mm-hmm, Sonic Mania mm-hmm. shows like the, the, the huge divide between 2D classic Sonic or whatever and 3D Sonic because at one point that was like universally loved or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Like at one point that was like in contention with Mario for like the platform. Yeah, right. Um, but 3D Sonic never really was, mm-hmm. you know, like 3D Sonic... Um, with Adventure 1 and 2 felt like that for a brief second of like, this game's mm-hmm. dope because it's like a yeah. little bit after Son- I mean, like Mario 64 came out and like in the same way that when you look at like Super Mario World and then you look at Sonic 2 or whatever, mm-hmm. right? It's like, oh my God, like this game feels like a, a not a full generational leap, but a, a noticeable like gain on what they tried to do a short while ago yeah um so in that regard i think 3d sonic had its like 15 seconds of fame but sonic had a like 2d sonic had a long time of like this is dope and even had multiple games past Mm -hmm. that they were like this is still good sonic cd is still good you know like the Mm -hmm. handheld sonic games that are 2d are still good um but there's no 3d sonic game that has stood the test of time and i think they want to have games that uh-huh. feel like that you know it is tricky i think because in the in the time of celeste for example that feels completely anti to sonic in some regards just because like i mean you you'd memorize sections but it is like it's one of the you know the pinnacle platformers or 2d platformers and it's all so truncated by little individual hard sections whereas mm. sonic i think especially thrived in its early days in an arcade era where people would play stuff over and over anyway so like mm-hmm. if you were playing sonic over and over and you were playing mario over and over by the end you'd probably have in some maybe a better experience with sonic because you'd be memorizing it and feel rewarded whereas with Mario, you all obviously get that as well, but there wouldn't be the the uh, gap between the beginning and the end of like, it felt good from the beginning, so it doesn't feel as much better or something like that at the end. Whereas nowadays, I just don't think people play games that way as much anymore. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I think that the thing that's funny is like Smash Brothers kind of gets those characters right in that way because mm-hmm. fighting Mario the, for the most part, if you're not playing online, I mean, even if you are playing online, is <laughs> a lot more reaction based. It's like you see him do that and you could punish whatever he's doing mm-hmm. or you can anticipate blah blah blah. Sonic is all anticipation. Sonic mm-hmm. is like, I have to catch you coming here because you're too fast to react. To. <laughs> um, yeah. And that's what <laughs> that's what it is. Like, okay, I, I lost that first stock, but I understand you now. So I'm mm-hmm, gonna fight you mm-hmm. based off of how I me losing my first stock to right. your crap. <laughs> uh, whereas Mario is like, I can fight him based off of what he's doing in the moment. Mario platforming wise is like, I can clear this challenge because I see it coming at me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's not <laughs> like beating it in hindsight. Yeah. So I don't know if Sega knows 100% what they're doing with Sonic, but they definitely don't know what's going on with Bayonetta either. Because apparently... Okay, so I hate this. I hate I this conversation so much. And that's, just, that was another thing before that, where I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, There's not really much to say. No, I know. Reading this article too, it's like, I, I have a hope for what this specifically means. And if so, then it was the right thing to say. But otherwise, it's just such a non thing. You know what I mean? We're like. Yeah. Because, I mean, okay. So let's fill the people in. Okay. Okay. Kamiya. This man said, basically, yo, forget Bayonetta 3 exists. Forget that it ever was announced because when it gets shown to the world, it'll be Mm -hmm. so much more exciting. I wonder. 
I wonder if there's uh, somebody <laughs> that that said to not uh, not do that exact thing. You know, uh, freaking string people along and say, "Hey, here's this game that's coming out in the future at some point in time." <laughs> uh, Get <yeah>. excited! <laughs> uh-huh. You know. Like, it's so dumb. Like, yeah. we're, this is another thing I was talking about on stream, uh, kind of in tandem with the conversation about, um, like, games in retrospect and, mm-hmm. like, whether we should, like, uh, treat games differently because they didn't age as well or whatever, right? Um, the hype cycle and, mm-hmm. and, like, in relation to, like, cyberpunk and all that stuff. And I was saying, like, there's no positive to hype there's none there's no positive to hype that doesn't also exist if you just announce the game when it's done i th- so here's my only thought on that i think the only positive is to the platform not to the game specifically yeah you know because like it benefits it benefited the switch in the first year to know but even then, all these I games in 2017 know. but it didn't necessarily See, but that's the thing right yeah. that's the thing though i when i say that like uh, <laughs> I'm not saying don't announce games before mm-hmm. they come out. I'm saying don't announce games before they're they're playable and they're games right. that exist because yes. yeah. that <laughs> helps nothing. That helps zero. Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey were more than – and those games were both, mm-hmm. at the very least, playable, if not completely finished by the time it was, like, yeah. switch time. You know? I think there's a reasonable amount of time that's, like – there's a there's a medium long that can exist that's helpful, but as soon as you start getting out of that, then it, I think at it ends up being bad. Most yeah. at most announce a game when it's eight months away. At yeah. most. I mean, most. honestly, like Smash was probably like that was the ideal like huge game release. And that was, yeah, um, nine months or so, something like that. Cause it was mm. yeah, March to December. So yeah, with and you know, already, the, like I'll say Smash was even too long. Because more often than not, when they re-showed the game again, people were annoyed by it. Because it's like, <laughs> okay, we know it's Smash. Smash is Smash. Just right. release it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there, there, I don't think there's any benefit for long hype cycles. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's the comments that he said specifically, which is why I, I, I feel like, again, this quote could mean one of two opposite ends of the same thing. Or a, whatever. Um, he said, when asked about uh, seeing Bayonetta 3 at some point in 2021, because, well, uh, do, 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 do. he had told fans that he hopes to share more on the title in 2021, and it seems like nothing set in stone yet. Here's what Camilla had to say about when asked about the potential of 2021 update. It's really not our position to say, but it's January. We've got to have something come out, right? I guess it's safe to expect that something will come out. There's still a lot of the year left is what I'm saying. And then continues on to say, I understand that it's driving the fan, the fans crazy. In light of that, my su- suggestion would be that maybe we should all reset and forget about Bayonetta 3. Then when something finally does happen, it'll be a nice surprise, won't it? So in my mind, this means one of, it, he's saying this from a position of one of two things. One it of could, which is to me either of the two extremes. It could ex- either be exactly. games relatively close or it's nowhere near. Yes, coming and out. like the relatively close bit, like I, and this it goes to your point of the hype cycle hurting because at this point, if the game was announced next week, then everybody would be like, finally, okay, we're finally seeing it. And like we've talked about that kind of thing before. We're like, there's a lot of announcements that like, especially when we know about them and they're spoiled or whatever, it feels like a finally not And like, not uh, like, a, oh my God, this is so hype, blah, blah, yes. blah. It's so I think him time. doing this, he's at minimum, I mean, either direction, he'd like there to be more hype when it actually gets announced and not people will feel like, oh, finally. Um, but whether it's coming out, you know, or it's being announced, next month or next year he'd like people to forget about it so that it can be you know an exciting thing but um hopefully for his sake and everything else i will say i doubt that it's kamiya's fault yeah (laughs) right this is probably a nintendo thing of like yo let's announce being at a three because again at the time it's like bayonetta one and two are coming out blah blah but i don't feel like bayonetta was in the same the only game that i'll say okay that being announced so far in advance and also i'm sure they didn't um think that it was as far in advance <laughs> yeah, right. as it was uh but the one that i'm like okay yeah that makes sense is metroid 100 um because like if they didn't announce that they were going to get a negative reaction for something that like 
was pretty cool otherwise. Yeah, you know? right. Um, where it's like, we just, like our last Metroid game was Federation Force, and now we're getting a port of the, like, <laughs> or a remake or whatever, uh, instead of Metroid Prime 4 or whatever, like a big new Metroid game. Um, yep. In that case, sure, I guess. Mm-hmm. But even then, it's like, I, I, I think that that's not beneficial to us. Mm -hmm. That just makes people feel good in the moment and it it stops Nintendo from getting heat. Um, But I just, I don't, I don't. And I was going to say like on some level, it helps us specifically us, you know, like (laughs) content creators and stuff when games are announced that far in the future, but us, me, meaning me and you, Parker and AJ, it doesn't like it it helps us more if games don't even exist yet. (laughs) Cause then we can (laughs) go, you know, it'd be cool with this. (laughs) This would be cool. Um, But when games are announced, it's like, we talk about it one time, but like when it's first announced and then we maybe talk about it a little bit before it comes out. Mm -hmm. And then again, when, it's out and then we're pretty yeah. much done with it i think yeah i mean we do it, we do kind of have to rely on the news cycle and the hype cycle of the game to be able to any in any way reactionarily talk about it right um because otherwise it's like pulling like obviously you know like we had uh rob on the video for this week for metroid stuff and he talks about metroid stuff all the time and and it's always or it's pretty much always based on some kind of news thing that comes out about it but the news things that come out about it are literally like they hired this one guy uh-huh. because like that's all that we've got <laughs> and like right. i know he'd like to talk about more you know specific things than that but like you, you kind of can't because there's nothing coming out about it so it's right. not like you can make more content in that large amount of time mm-hmm. based on things so yeah but yeah. Outside of that, outside of content, mm-hmm. it, it, it does nothing. Like for somebody that just wants to play games, and I like talking about games, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the hype cycle is det- detrimental to the mm-hmm. to the experience. It just makes everything worse because it either it's like you you just got everybody strung along for so long, or you're like unrealistically hyping them up for a game that is going to be at best mediocre or what you know not saying uh-huh. that that's the case for bayonetta or metroid prime or whatever but like mm-hmm. cyberpunk that game right. was yeah. hyped up for a decade and it's still being developed before our very eyes for six dollars <laughs> you know like <laughs> like uh-huh yep and still being developed for our very eyes is uh, the future of astral chain and the mm-hmm. fact that nintendo owns that ip um this that's it very yeah, that's the whole is... news bit <laughs> this is this is weird. Um, I wonder if this is a thing where Nintendo's like, hmm, Astro Train, we see a future in this. Give mm-hmm. us the IP. We want it. Because it was like supposedly partially owned by, it was like co-owned by Platinum and Nintendo, and now it's mm-hmm. wholly owned by Nintendo. So I wonder if they, Nintendo was like, okay, we want this. Or if it was like some sort of like bargaining chip of like, okay, fine, you can have Wonderful 101, but give us Astro Train mm-hmm. or whatever, yeah, you know? <laughs> like. Yeah, because I mean, Wonderful One One came out after that, so yeah, that's that. Or I mean, just like maybe it was a clause of some sort where, like, if it sells over this amount, then we'll buy you out of this IP, or if it doesn't, then you get to, you know, we'll keep it as it is, or mm-hmm. something weird. But yeah, it definitely seems like for whatever it's worth, Nintendo was happy with the reception to the IP and the game, I guess specifically sales wise, or the potential that it could be in the future or something, and decided to buy it after the fact because yeah it definitely seems like um to what we understood that platinum owns at least half part of it whatever prior mm-hmm. to this news yeah. and that's no longer the case um yeah so i mean here's the specific quotes um do 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 one of the one of 2019 standout switch games astral chain was a bold and exciting new release from platinum games directed by um, Taka- Takahashi Taura, the game sold above expectations and showed fans that the studio's relationship with Nintendo was as strong as ever. And the game was, after all, co owned by both parties. We say was because Platinum Games has confirmed that the Astral Chain IP now belongs solely to Nintendo. Earlier this year, fans had noticed that the game's copyright notice had been tweaked on the studio's website with Platinum Games' name being removed altogether. Speaking of VGC, studio head Atsushi Inaba has confirmed that the change is no mistake. As it looks, or it's as it looks, it's as it's written on the website. Astral Chain is their IP, and as such, there are limitations on how much we feel we should talk about. Yes. 
so the other possibility is that Nintendo wants to do something broader with Astral Chain that's not just like Astral Chain 2, but use mm -hmm. them as characters elsewhere. In you know like what I mean? A, yeah, like, like in another fully game. different kind of game that's not a Platinum Games developed title. Or Yeah. So, I mean, that's possible. Like uh, Astral Chain uh, freaking Puzzle first game. person shooter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, that's or a like multiplayer shooter or something like that. That wouldn't be. I don't think it would make any sense. But a mobile game of some sort, you know, like there's mm -hmm. pretty much anything that it could end up being. I don't know what would make the most sense for it because right now we only know it in the context of Astral Chain. So yeah, it's like what elements of that could they get rid of? A card game. That's what it is. It's a trading card game, mm -hmm. and you yeah capture yeah. Uh, collect legions and stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, i don't know yeah i play i, I mean people will know i to some degree i played astral chain for i don't know i probably got about halfway through it or so and then stopped and gave it back to mitch because it was his copy and i feel i feel all right about it i, I think i didn't like the love game. games dumb big, there stupid. were there were bits that i really <laughs> enjoyed and then there were bits that i just really didn't care much for i didn't love the detective stuff just because that's not my thing in general like so I think that detracted a lot for me. <laughs> but I liked the action Yay. bits. You know, that was fun. Um, so, yeah. It Game was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun time. And so was uh, Nintendo's Holiday 2020, for which we will be finding out the financial results in just a couple days. On Monday, February 1st, we'll be getting the... Um, the yeah fiscal results for holiday 2020 so do we want to just check out any predictions real quick for yeah you know, i'm trying to find 2019 <laughs> mm, yeah i don't know you can find that here i'll pull up real quick the um and i'll share my screen on this the standings right now let's see where is that dedicated video game sales unit okay i'm gonna share my screen so this is where we're at right now. Share. It did it. So the Nintendo Switch has sold 68.3 million units um, within the game. That's not the thing I meant to click on. Top selling titles. So 68 million units. And then Mario Kart 8 is at 28 million and a bunch of other ones are over 20 million. Um, not a bunch, just two more so far. And this is what the top 10 looks like. So I don't know. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it because we probably actually will spend a decent chunk of time on it next week talking about it retrospectively. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you have any specific predictions on like how this could get shuffled around um, or how many units were sold? Any of those kinds of things? Uh, I think that... Hold on. So this was... No, this is from 2018 though. Like oh, this maybe is... that was the one in 2019 for 2019? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh, boo. I know the one for 2019 was like their biggest holiday season, and I can't imagine this one's not a bigger holiday season because – Yeah, exactly, but I'm trying, I'm trying to like figure out like by how much. You know, right. like I, I think it's going to sell more than it did the last time. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. if they sold 20 million last time, I think they're going to sell 24 million. I want to say time. last time was like 10, 10 and a half or something like that. I could be totally off on, uh, on that, but here, Nintendo Switch – Media, just for the specific actual sales, this will tell us at least the difference. Because um, this is what I've used a number of times before. I think Animal Crossing is going to further gain on Mario Kart. I Do you think, think it'll it outsell it? it? Okay. No. Yep. Um, I think that Smash Brothers is still going to be in the top three, but whatever's number four, Breath of the Wild, I guess is going to be closer mm -hmm. um because i don't think smash like i think smash brothers eventually is going to fall out of the top three um, once the like dlc's done and stuff like that uh possibly even before that hmm. um maybe like when the dlc's done assuming that they do like a some sort of bundle whether mm -hmm. that be through yeah. dlc or a new release of it like the complete edition sort of situation 
Um, mm-hmm. I think that maybe it'll go back to number three for a while, but I mm-hmm. think when everything's all said and done, it's going to be top five, not top yeah. three. Yeah, I could see that. So then you think Breath of the Wild will be the one to push it out or something else instead? Yeah, I could see Breath of the Wild eventually get in the top three because mm-hmm. I think that more people are going to buy Breath of the Wild when right. Breath of the Wild 2 is in, in yeah. view. Uh-huh. Uh, it's got and, some evergreen stuff going for it that yeah. some of the other ones, like cause Smash definitely, you know, obviously you have it as a party game, multiplayer game and stuff like that. But for playing it more single player slash online, it's, there will still be a community, but it'll be one of those where like, there's still a community for Splatoon 2, but I've, my, well, I don't care about it that much, but I know that I've asked Mitch before if he'd be interested and he's like, ah, I just kind of don't want to do it after the fact now that, you know, everybody's done playing. I'm like, no, there's still a lot of people playing. It's like, I don't want to do it when I, everyone's I, done yeah, playing. I, you know, I, th- I think feeling. in the grand scheme of things, there's definitely like a lot like Elite Smash or whatever yeah. has like a window of like 2 million people or whatever, right? Yeah. Where it's like, it's about 2 million people that can qualify for this thing. Mm-hmm. So that means that there's at least 2 million ish people that are pretty actively playing this game. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I would say, but it is probably, harder competition or more people that know cheesy tricks that you don't want to deal with. And stuff I mean, like that, that doesn't really, that, that doesn't really matter in terms of like this conversation of like what's right. selling what and blah, blah, blah. And like mm-hmm. what's more relevant. I think that actively like people from a day to day, week to week basis are playing smash then are playing like breath of the wild or whatever, but mm-hmm. breath of the wild has more sales potential to yes. be bought by more people that are going to play it once play it through and be done with it you know Mm -hmm. um whereas like the people that are going to play smash brothers have smash brothers maybe there'll be a few more people that played it at their friend's house and now they have Mm -hmm. a switch now but like i don't think that it's going to be as big of a boost to sell or get a big as big of a boost to sales as breath of the wild could yeah um so some other predictions um here's the question is does super mario 3d all-stars come out on top of new super mario bros u deluxe yes 100 percent, for sure for sure definitely yeah. yes absolutely and that's one where i could see it i definitely thought so before it yeah i mean probably um but it, it sold five million units i think in september alone so the question is like did it drop off quickly or keep up but i mean i would assume keep up um, and then otherwise, I also think Super Mario Party is probably going to outpace Pokemon with Scopey June Eevee because yeah, they're pretty yeah, close, yeah. but Super Mario Party is still selling super well yeah, for Pokemon some reason. Yeah, Pokemon Let's Go doesn't, <laughs> is similar to Smash Bros. Where like, yeah. It doesn't really have a reason. Yeah, and like Pokemon Sword and Shield sell. is definitely slowing down as well. We're like, it'll get past 20 million for sure, but mm. it'll slow down after that. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think the top five eventually that we're looking at, unless new games come out that like just you know really break through are mario kart animal crossing um breath of the wild mario odyssey and smash i think smash is going to outsell mario odyssey or still yeah. like stay on top of mario odyssey yep um i think mario odyssey might eventually fall uh, out of the top yeah five. maybe hmm. oh well in any case a bunch of good stuff um and as far as number of units sold i'm i'm gonna say let's see that we hit just barely under a like 79.70 million units so it'll be whatever number that is Wait, where 11 dedicated something. i'm say 75 million units 75 okay no, well that we already be... passed 75 i think they already said that the uh the switch is either it is like on par with 3ds or it passed 3ds Oh I'm really? I'm pretty sure I saw that. I mean, I'm way. sure I'm sure that's the case because that would be, um, because they only need to sell. So I'm gonna say 76.3. Cool. <laughs> I I'm do think say. it'll be more than that because that would be less than the holiday the year before. I'm pretty sure. Pretty so sure. all right, I'm saying, uh, wait, how many did it sell last? I, it's in the ten-ish range, I think. All right, so I'm saying somewhere right below 79 million. Cool. Yeah. Somewhere in that range, 79 million. I, Maybe even 80. High uh, high prediction, mm-hmm. 80 million. Yep. Uh, middle range prediction, like 68 million. And then low prediction. I mean, 78 million. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, I was like, that's low prediction. Now. <laughs> low, low prediction, 77. <laughs> Man. So there it is. There's uh, some of our predictions for all that. I'm trying to see if this 
chart is somewhere so I can get the numbers, but it doesn't matter that much. We'll find out literally in three days, two mm -hmm. days for you guys. Mm -hmm. And now that's it from the news. Well, let's talk about some comments from the videos. Um, you made a video. You want to tell us a little bit about it? I did another no script video because I didn't it's like last minute decided what I wanted to talk about. It was Pokemon again. I was like, I don't know mm -hmm. how I script for this. <laughs> um, again, I don't know how it was like. It, I didn't get any comments that were like, this didn't seem like. No, yeah. I mean, it, it feels about the same, honestly. So, I mean, I knew, and at some point, so I was like, was this scripted? <laughs> like, so <laughs> maybe that's just me. This video, as far as like filming it, it was harder mm. than the other video because I didn't have like, like the last video I did, it was like 20 minutes of filming. Uh, mm -hmm. And this video was like 40 minutes of filming, which yeah. all things considered is still a lot less time spent. Very <laughs> true. Writing a video takes me, like all things considered, writing a video and filming that is like, that's at least eight hours. Yeah. Um, but just filming it where filming it is scripting it and that taking mm -hmm. less than an hour, sign me up, dude. <laughs> yep. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'll never script the video again. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I got to try it on a non Pokemon video first. Before yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, like I said, I've tried it and I'm not good at it. So there's that. <laughs> I felt not good at it on this video, but again, the reception, I was like, maybe it's still good. Eh? Mm -hmm. but it, uh, I just exaggerate things in my head when I'm filming yeah. stuff. Like I usually hate filming and well, now I like filming more. Um, but when I, when it was a scripted thing, I used to hate filming because mm -hmm. it felt like it was taking me so long to finish it. But in reality, like, I'm like, man, it takes me like three hours to film a video and it takes me like 25 minutes or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if that, um, that. so it's like that sort of situation. It feels like a, like a hyperbolic time chamber in my head of like, I'm shooting this video and it's taking me, I'm messing up. I can feel that I'm messing up a lot when mm -hmm. filming this thing and doing multiple takes and feel, just yeah, like, right. it feels like wasted time. Yeah. Um, no, multiple but, takes. That's always a weird thing. I'm I've, also sorry to anybody who like never made videos, but here's some info anyway about all that. Yeah, definitely. Like I'll say something like, man, I feel like I tried to say that like 20 times and i'll go back and it was like four and i'm like yeah, how did that yeah exactly <laughs> so this much of the timeline like that's not that much but it felt like i was doing it for i remember saying this line 20 more times than this <laughs> like yeah and then like weird. doing it this way it kind of compounds with the save time mm -hmm. because when you're editing that even though i had 40 minutes of footage or whatever it was faster to edit this video than it was to edit the 20 minutes of footage because i messed up less mm -hmm. so it was like more what do i think makes this film more cohesive mm -hmm. in like a, a finished thing yeah um rather with the 40 minutes of footage it was like i messed up here cut that out i messed up here <laughs> cut that out and just yeah. fast forwarding in the timeline where it's like okay i moved on to another point so that means that this bit of the video ends here <laughs> you know the 40 minutes is very fitting because that was literally i it, it was like 39 and a half minutes for how long it took me to film my video this week so there you go there's that um all right some comments cool cool said i personally didn't like the game like oh, there you at go. all it was confusing for me <laughs> and just not interesting. It got old wow. pretty quickly in my experience. I think I'd rather have a... right now. Don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'd rather have a somewhat larger roster with more unique abilities and moves. Also, just get rid of the phases, make a normal game. That's just me though. Not saying it's bad, just I didn't like it. Uh yeah, no, I disagree with most of this. Um, I agree with the the thing about the bigger roster and more unique abilities mm -hmm. um i think the phases is a really cool part of the game and it adds to like the strategy of it all because it's like um once you're like in the part of like the, your ability to play the game mm -hmm. uh, of like strategizing while you're playing um which i feel like is like that's when you unlocked your brain in a fighting game right because a lot of times when uh -huh. people are newer to fighting it's like i'm just going to mash and then whatever happens happens 
Um, but when you get to the point where you're like playing the game, it's like, okay, being in this phase would not help me get to my goal, uh, mm -hmm. like in the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that's a really cool part of Pokémon specifically where it's like, there's times where, um, it's like, oh man, I got to figure out how this person fights more, or I got to like buy time and get my abilities. I mean, like my specials and my gauges and stuff like that filled out. So I want to be in the field, uh, space. Yeah. Um, or then there's other times where it's like, ah, I got this dude on the ropes. He doesn't know what he's doing, man. I can kill him right now. I'm going into the, the dual phase immediately and I'm going to end this man and mm -hmm. I'm going to stay in the dual phase by like doing like starting combos and ending them. So it doesn't get him into the field phase so that he can collect himself or she or whatever can collect themselves and, you know, turn the tide. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that's a really cool part of the, like the push and pull of the of it all. So I feel like I mean I that totally makes sense. I I agree with cool cool because I didn't like the dual phases thing, but or that the the phases thing, but I think it's a lot of like a you know fighting games better than I imagine cool cool is more in my camp of like I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm like kind of trying to figure some stuff out, but it's right. it's harder to like I think the ideal would be the ability to and maybe you can do this and I just don't know, but like in single player at least um set it to where you can do field phase only, dual phase only or it defaults to both, but you could, you know, switch it to be one or the other if you want because then I think the the switching phases makes it to where people who are bad at it just feel punish so both ways yeah, exactly yeah. you just feel because you're like okay i'm kind of getting the hang of this and then you're switching you're like no nah, i don't know what i'm doing at all um so that's that's how i feel in that kind of situation but i think it does help increase the ceiling so that mm -hmm. there's you know it is more competitive in that regard because there's more options and it feels very similar yeah, just to what you like about pokemon trainer game. and that can exactly yeah, yeah. i like differentiate the game more because like if it was like the coolest thing to me about pokemon is that it's not pokemon tech mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's the thing when people say they want it to be just 2d like it's mm -hmm. like i just wanted to be pokemon tech and and right <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah i mean i think i would prefer if it were only if it were only one or the other probably i'd want it to be just the field phase even though i felt like i was worse at that one the little bit that i played of it um it at least felt more you know in universe and stuff yeah. to be like in a little arena instead of just like side by side kind of thing but yeah but i, I mean i definitely get the yeah so cool, cool it's like the life. the phases and like yeah i get that i understand uh -huh. like if you don't get the game it's like the, the phases is just an added layer that makes mm -hmm. you feel worse mm -hmm. about not understanding what's happening <laughs> yeah um, i completely understand that but i think that that would just strip the game of like what makes it special because like yeah. once you do like each individual part of that mm -hmm. is kind of frail you know like there's not a whole lot there to like the mm -hmm. dual phase and the field phase apart from each other mm -hmm. because there, it's like the dual phase is like it's sort of like a <laughs> you know it's yeah. kind of like that and the field phase is like it's kind of like a naruto like mm -hmm. you know like an arena fighter sort of situation yeah. but neither one of them has a lot of depth to the to to those corresponding phases mm -hmm. independent of each other because they're meant to be intertwined and they're meant to be switching back and forth and doing all yeah. that stuff um so i think that like it, it could be cool if they did like a mode you know where it's like how smash brothers is like you can have it with items or without items or special mm -hmm. smash mm -hmm. where you have curry and the like the rabbit ears <laughs> and like all that stuff if they did yeah. that sort of thing where it's like all field phase that yeah. I, I would be down for that but if the game actively right. removed a huge part of the 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 mechanics of the game, I think mm -hmm. that that would make for a, a worse thing. Like I would prefer for them to add and not mm -hmm. subtract. Yeah. Um, but Especially when... for the like higher levels of play and stuff. I think mm -hmm. the only thing that that, I think adding the options would add uh, something for the kind of base level player that isn't a fighting game player, but just wants to play, you know, Pokemon right. fighting game kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but taking it away would instead take away a yeah because at the end of the day all you all you would do there right like okay so say they do that and they they make it more approachable for mm -hmm. people that don't understand the game and stuff like that which i think they do need to make it more approachable mm -hmm. but yeah. i don't think i have ideas about that i'm getting i don't think that's the only way to <laughs> make it more approachable i right. think making it more approachable means being a better on-ramp to help mm -hmm. people understand the mechanics that are currently yep. there um but if you limit the mechanics that are there all you're doing is limiting your user base 
at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Because best case scenario, you you get a lot more, a bigger player base and stuff like that. And it's going to be people like you and people like Cool Cool that's like, okay, I understand this game and I like this game now. I'm going to play it for maybe a month and then I'm going to drop it. <laughs> yeah, now. right. Exactly. You know, like, whereas that's not a that dedicated are, audience or anything. Exactly. I mean, that's why I think like, I think it's good that Smash has CPU characters be default level three. It's not level mm -hmm. one and it's not level nine because, you know, level nine would be impossible for somebody that's new. Um, but, and a level one would be like overly easy to where you're like, I'm not even seeing any of the challenge, but like a level three feels like a good kind of middle ground where it's like, you can do this. Like you mm -hmm. got this, even if you don't know what you're doing, you're kind of button mashing a bit, like they'll do a couple of cool things, but you can beat them. Um, mm -hmm. so I think that kind of on-ramp, like you said, is, is definitely helpful and something that the original in my limited experience with it was missing a decent amount. Mm. And it, it's, it's also a thing of like, poke it. Like, I, I think that a big part of it is like, they need to have a bigger roster, like poke it, mm -hmm. Pokemon having a 28 character roster or something like that. It's blasphemy. <laughs> There's a thousand Pokemon, you know, yeah. like, and I like. I understand it would take a lot of development time to it's impossible. They're not putting a thousand Pokemon in Pokemon. Mm -hmm. It's never going to happen. Um, but I think a hundred, you know, like <laughs> have a roster around that size that mm -hmm. could be decent. And then uh, like a support roster of like 150, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't all have to be competitive either. You know, yeah. like you could just have a, a bunch of them be, do some cool moves, but not be that great. And they could even be ones where like the com the like fighting game community recognizes this character's broken, there's not gonna be in there. The same way the Smash characters do with stages. Or on the flip side, they're like, this character's just no good, like probably just don't do them. Cause, yeah, right. Cause Pokemon's like that. I mean, great. Exactly, like you're not gonna bring I, a Dratini into like- I don't level. really like about Pokemon, <laughs> but like, it would be good if every Pokemon was usable. But right. again, I think that that's more the job of Pokemon proper, like a mainline mm -hmm. game to figure that out and mm -hmm. have Pokemon be mostly balanced. Um, but in the fighting game, like doing things like that, where it's like, and this is the featherweight, you know, like mm -hmm. that's sort of like mm -hmm. everybody plays Pikachu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> which I uh -huh. think Pikachu is actually kind of good. At yeah. Pokemon, but that, I digress. Um, all right, I'm going to keep going with these, and I'm sure some other things will come up through this. Mm -hmm. uh, Nikki Scott said, it's nice to see I'm not the only one who thinks this, too. It was a great game on blah, blah, blah. it was a great game on Wii U and Switch, and, well, not many folks really cared about it that much on either platform, not even in arcades in Japan, from what I heard. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, surprisingly, Pokken, there's a vibrant community. Like, there's people that care about mm -hmm. Pokken. It's just not big as far as, like, you know, people that play video games on a regular basis it's big right. in the way that melee is big mm -hmm. it's not as big as melee but it's mm -hmm. big with that sort of player base and like pokemon company still actively supports the game where mm -hmm. when they do pokemon worlds it's pokemon tcg it's pokemon mm -hmm. vdc and it's pokemon yeah um and I think that something like that has a lot of potential to to flourish overall because the competitive scene is like uh, kept happy with like a lot of events to go to and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and blah, blah, blah. And then that then encourages more people to like get better at the game, even if they're not good. You know, it has the, the melee effect where they had the melee documentary and that like mm -hmm. introduce more people to smash brothers overall and make them want to get good at the game and then you got all different levels of players that all encourage each other to play the game more there's mm -hmm. people that are like on your level that want to get better at the game because they see stuff like the smash brothers mm -hmm. documentary right and there's people like on my level where it's like man i could be really good at this game if i just did x mm -hmm. y and z right um i think having that gradient is the goal Mm -hmm. And there's a few things that they need to do to get to that point. Because yeah. right now, all they have is the highest of the high tier mm -hmm. that like, are mm -hmm. actively playing this game. Uh, JBL17 says, I always thought the game looked cool and wanted it, but didn't get it because I didn't have a Wii U, but got the Switch version. I also don't know if there's a big reason to make a sequel since it seems that it's big that it's a big viewer draw at Pokemon tournaments, but it's Pokemon and they make new games all the time. A new push would help this game's popularity and make it a new game so... Uh, I'm all down for a new game. Also, yes, make it tag team battles instead of just support Pokemon. Yeah. 
Um, I think that that's a lot of the reason for it, though. Like, I think that the reason why it's not a big viewer draw for Pokemon tournaments is that it doesn't fulfill what a lot of video game tournaments in general fulfill. The reason why, like, video game tournaments feel great to watch is because of that I can do that effect you know mm-hmm. it's like the, the the sort of thing of like old old dads that were like I used to be really good at football in <laughs> high school but now my knee yeah. doesn't work so I love football so watching NFL <laughs> is like exactly like oh, I, I used to do that I could do yeah. that you know I think it's um, either either that side where it feels like like come on you're so dumb that you didn't do whatever because I could do that or mm-hmm. the like crazy side of like it like you mentioned in your video where like some of the campy characters don't look particularly fun Mm -hmm. so it's not like watching like watching you know high level gymnastics or skateboarding or something where it's like people are doing amazing crazy things that's Mm -hmm. fun to watch but anywhere that's in between those two things can definitely be you would have to care just about the thing in general to you know to know that it's cool and that's like Cause there's like the whole, I brought up briefly about the, like the Min Min thing, right? Where mm-hmm, it's like mm-hmm. for people that don't play Min Min, um, it's like, oh man, this is boring. She's just doing the same move. <laughs> but for people that do play Min Min, it's easier to see like, oh, okay, well they, ha- if they would have done mm-hmm. a smash attack there, they would have died because you can't jump after doing a smash attack. And, but like, mm-hmm. there's all these different intricacies with the different moves that she does mm-hmm. um, that look the same. But if you play the character, you know, like, oh, okay, this was right. different. So they couldn't do this or they could do this, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. Uh, Pokken has a lot of that too, where it's like, there's a lot of min mins. It's like you don't know what's happening, so it's not hype because you yeah. don't know the 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 work that went into that or the thought that mm-hmm. went into that. Um, and that's that's why there was that divide because like the difference between like Bayonetta and Brakeson was that Bayonetta was just straight up a character that had this huge gap. Regardless of how good you are mm-hmm. at the game, you could be the best player in the world. If you're not playing Bayonetta, you're going to lose to the somewhat competent Bayonetta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like Brixen wasn't that. Brixen was just, oh, you lost because you didn't get this strategy. You could have counterplayed it if you understood it, but you didn't. So you didn't. <laughs> and mm-hmm. you could. That's kind of, again, that's the, the, the Min Min thing where it's like, there's a lot of clips that people send me. And I was talking about this on stream too, where it's like, Bob sends me clips of like, look at this, you know, this is unfair. And it's like, yeah, because that person did the one thing that, ba- that, that Min Min is looking to punish. Uh-huh. So many people for Min Min specifically, they get up attack, which is when you press the A button and it, like your character mm-hmm, does like mm-hmm. a slash or whatever, or they neutral get up, which is just standing up and doing nothing. Those are the things that Min Min wants you to do, but you can jump, you can roll, you know, like you can drop off the ledge and then do an attack and like bait her to attack you first. So she's in lag and blah, blah. It's that sort of stuff mm-hmm. um, that playing the game teaches you and makes you want to watch it and be more invested. Once there's more people playing this new Pokemon game, because it's a new thing and it's a Pokemon thing, I think that the scene for Mm -hmm. watching tournaments and competing in tournaments will grow. I think there's, yeah, there's a big difference between knowing and watching sports of sorts or games or whatever, the things that did happen and the things that could have happened that like Mm -hmm. watching chess feels like a prime example of that where like anybody watching chess that doesn't know about chess, I would be bored out of my mind because I'd be like, yeah, I see the things that they chose to do, but I'm not seeing all the things that they could do. And so that same game to somebody who knows what's going on, is like, wow, that was so interesting. Like that they chose to do that. And like, it makes me think of that um, Pokemon tournament where that girl uh, last year, or the year before, or something I guess two years ago, because it wasn't during lockdown. Yep. But mm-hmm. she she either read she read the protect where like she knew he was going to protect, so yep. she did something something something. And like even to me, who's played a bunch of Pokemon, like it, not having played in a competitive sense, I understood what happened, but like it wasn't as interesting because I don't know yeah, the you didn't get what happened. Because like, like the, mm-hmm. most people don't teach their Pokemon moves like that right where it's like i don't need protect i'm just gonna mash (laughs) flamethrower you know (laughs) yeah right so but like the getting the intricacies of like the brain game you know behind it is is definitely different so yeah the way that that pokin works into that would be definitely i think having more characters helps as well because then it's just interesting by like oh look at this fun thing that pikachu is doing i know pikachu you know Mm -hmm. um so and adding adding on both ends of that spectrum, I think would would definitely be helpful. 
Right. Um, next comment. You say the synchro hero says, I remember wishing my boy Gallade was a playable fighter. I know Smash is and was absolutely out of the question. Well, just very unlikely compared to other Pokemon. Mm -hmm. But technically, not impossible for something like Pokémon. Mm -hmm. alas it never came to be lol never ended up picking up either version of the game because of that oh uh, yeah that and i'm not sure if the change in fighting styles through each battle each time is stressful for someone like me to truly get good at but i would have at least persevered if Gallade was playable yeah that's a huge part of it right because it's yeah. like for me there's like there's like a lot of like like right now the trend within Smash is like everybody wants to play melee because mm -hmm. they have like the freaking um Slippy and and like they're adding characters like they added Wolf to melee mm -hmm. and stuff. Oh, like interesting. That. He's not yeah. in the original melee. Um, but I don't care about melee because Pokemon Trainer is not in it. <laughs> you know, I was like, there's but no if character. They put Pokemon Trainer in it? Would you? Yeah, I might be down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I might be down with uh, with uh, melee. I mean, outside of like the legality of it, like if I can right. find a way to like dump the thing and like do all that stuff, I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, but because yeah. Pokemon Trainer is not in it, I don't even care to care. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, that's how that's I feel. There's some Smash fighters that if they announced, I'd be like, I'm going to dip back in for a little while. Like, I'll buy it mm -hmm. and I'll play it just because it would be fun to do that. But right. there's not a lot of them. And that's definitely the kind of thing that I could see somebody, like in, in your case, you say, um, just not pick up the game because just because the character wasn't there, you know? Yeah. So I get that. Because for me, that's a big part of like wanting to get good at something. I mean, mm -hmm. there there's exceptions to that. Like I'm learning Sephiroth. I don't care about Sephiroth. <laughs> but I think he's fun. And mm -hmm. I think like the mind games of like punishing people with his range and like the mm -hmm. different mechanics he has. Like, oh, you shielded? I'm going to use the Octo, uh, the what, what, Omni Slat. I mean, the uh -huh. freaking huge beam thing. <laughs> I'm going to use that crap. And uh -huh. then you're just dead because either your shield's broken or you're going to roll into it. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like that. I like that about right. Sephiroth but for the most part usually the thing that gets me in the door is liking a character just uh superficially <laughs> yeah for sure uh last one Uraraka gang <laughs> Tekken is by far the most complicated fighting game to learn mm -hmm. how to play well in so I think Pokken needs to either heavy simplify its gameplay or they just need to simplify further and make it completely 2d or completely 3d uh I agree with the first part of that, but I don't think that they're related because mm -hmm. I mean, I said before, like namesake wise and like the, the, the team behind it, it feels like Pokemon, like Pokemon is supposed to be Pokemon Tekken, but mm -hmm. it's not, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so the comparison doesn't really need to be there. I think that Pokemon, the, a Pokemon fighting game being complicated isn't a problem mm -hmm. um, because I think that they want the Pokemon fighting game to be a Pokemon fighting game, you know, mm -hmm. not a fighting game that has Pokemon in it. They, mm -hmm. they don't want to make it not fit in the genre that it's in just because it's a Pokemon game. Yeah. Uh, Pokemon, the, like the mainline games or whatever, like, yeah, they're a, a more simplified RPG or whatever, but at the end of the day, they're still an RPG. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of ways, they're not simplified because relative to like RPGs that people want Pokemon to be, they're actually more complicated, but it takes another human to, mm -hmm. to like yes. make you realize that. So, and here's what I was going to say. Uh, this is like my, my one big thought for the whole topic that I was waiting to see if it was in a comment. And it wasn't, but it relates to this one for sure. Is that like, I think the best case scenario for Pokken 2 is to keep the like top level fan base happy. Like we've talked about where like the people that are really into it are really into it. And there's incentive for that. Um, and also like we talked about the on-ramp thing. But I think what that needs is not to simplify what it is to play the game, but I think is to... Um, just have a whole side of the game that's tailored towards people that want to play a Pokemon fighting game, but not, but have no interest in the, like what it means to like play a Pokemon fighting game on the top level. So pretty much mm -hmm. the world of light kind of situation of like single player stuff. Like I, I probably would have picked up Pokemon if it had, I mean, you talked about this a little bit in the video too, but like yeah. the trappings around, you know, it's a boss rush and stuff like exactly, that. Exactly. If it had like a, a good single player where it was probably about the same mechanics, but like even had, you know, a little bit of story. They could have literally, yeah. quite literally just did a regular Pokemon game where it's like, get all the badges, 
Yeah. But instead of picking options on a menu, you get all the badges and you use your partner Pokemon or whatever, and right? And like little cutscenes. I think if I remember right, uh, I think I played Tekken Tag or Tekken 4 or something like that at a friend's house. And it was just the, the story mode or whatever. But there mm-hmm. were, you know, two minute cutscenes before each fight that mm-hmm. felt like it gave character to who the person was that you were fighting. Mm-hmm. Some of that you know like you're fighting against this trainer and something something yeah something. and i mean they like, sort of do that but it's like okay. all text and it's like i'm jimmy right. <laughs> this yeah. is how and my I pokemon, like pokemon is too. Yeah, yeah exactly right. i think so. having like you know just completely new characters that aren't even at, at minimum sun and moon reuse. i mean uh, sword and shield which also sun and moon yeah the <laughs> cut scenes like that those yeah. cutscenes yeah. just in this game, I yeah. think, could make Pokémon significantly more popular. Yeah, um, just yeah, just feeling like if you just play single player, you got your money's worth. I think is an important thing for for a large portion of the fan base. Yeah. Where in the same way that like the Pokémon RPG, the mainline Pokémon games, there's part of the game, like a full part of the game that's just single player and also people that rush through that so that they can get to the multiplayer online bit, just have Pokémon be the same thing. Where like there's, you feel like you got your money's worth out of the single player part, even if like maybe a little bit less than your money's worth, you know? And then- It, it, um, could, it could literally just accomplish the same thing. Yeah. Because like, it's not like, the the campaign in Pokemon is not geared towards even people like that that just mm-hmm. want to play the campaign and they're done. Mm-hmm. It's geared towards people that want to go past and do the thing, but it feels complete in that way yes, because it's a, right. it starts at A and it gets you to Z. It's mm-hmm. supposed to say, okay, you don't know anything about Pokemon, but at by the time you beat the Elite Four, you're competent enough to get good at Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, right. and I think that that's kind of what Pokemon should aim to be too, where mm-hmm. it does that in practice, uh, and the in the way that it's like you start and you do the first like the Ferrum League or whatever, and that that may like okay, I get the game, I beat the, the 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 easy mode or whatever, right? And then you fight harder and harder boss rushes of different Pokemon. And it's like okay, I inherently learned how to play this mm-hmm. game because if I I didn't i was gonna lose <laughs> you know um yeah. it does that but it doesn't like actively teach you anything like because in pokemon it's like there's even moments where npcs where it's like hop man you, you i mean freaking yeah you use flamethrower on my grass type that really hurt dude <laughs> you know like that sort of stuff uh yeah so there it is there's that yeah. pokemon there it is dude good thoughts Pokemon. Um, and then I made a video with, uh, we got Robin there for it's Metroid, true. which mm-hmm. was fun. You um, hurt Max deeply. <laughs> <I did. laughs> Sorry, Max. Um, Oreo <laughs> Sorry, says. Sorry, he's going to do it again and again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Oreo said, my personal most likely prediction, not most wanted, is we get a Samus Returns HD enhanced or remastered ported to Switch this year. And that's it. <laughs> this is Nintendo we're talking about here. They did the bare minimum for Mario's 35th, so I'm not expecting much. Did they? I don't know. I, yeah. I disagree with that. I disagree yeah. with that completely. But they did the bare minimum. Especially I think there were... as a freaking pandemic dude. Like, they, they wanted to launch a whole theme park. <laughs> like... I definitely think that there was... Yeah, the pandemic thing was a part of it. And then um, there were... Th- I think as far as what the 3D All-Stars thing was, that felt like the bare minimum to a lot of people. But, like, I think it was the thing... Yeah, but that wasn't the only component to, right, the, exactly. to the anniversary. Like, because, I mean, 3D like... The World was supposed to be a part Bowser's of that. Bowser's Fury is part of that still. Yeah, you know, Bowser's like, Fury, the Levi stuff, the Lego stuff. The, they, they did so much. They, they did way more for Mario than mo- even companies that people, like Sega and all, uh, like, that, that people are usually like, man, they really care about their franchises. Mm-hmm. And they do really good celebrations. And stuff. The Mario 35th anniversary was huge, but it was mm-hmm. kind of screwed by the timing. Yeah. And I do think with Metroid, like, they, they could very well have the benefit of the stockpiling kind of thing. Um, is just the fact that there's, again, maybe Metroid Prime Trilogy HD um, and Samus Returns. Like, again, yeah, they can, they probably have pretty easy mechanisms to port things from uh, from 3DS to Switch. So, like, that's two games that they don't even need to, like, do extra things this year particularly to get them out. Mm. So they can tack that on other stuff and make it feel like Metroid is this huge celebration yeah, when they 
you know, only really made one thing, maybe. But then they that, like, I think that for Metroid, they're doing the bare minimum. I just took <laughs> issue with the they did bare minimum for Mario because they did not. They very uh-huh. much so did not. There's so much that they did for Mario, like so much mm-hmm. <laughs> that Metroid is not going to get any. They're not even going to get. I don't half know. I feel like that. the no, no, no. Yeah, they won't get half of that. But I think the bare minimum for Metroid would honestly be nothing because yeah. that's a that's a likely bare minimum and i think uh-huh. that they're going to do more than that you yeah, know yeah, 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 yeah. so they'll but they'll they won't do the maximum but there will be it'll be somewhere interesting but uh, continuing on with the comment my other less likely predictions but more wanted for 2021 are either prime trilogy hd new 2d metroid or game boy slash game boy online with zero mission and fusion available right away as the first games to play or all the above which would be the best but that's just a pipe dream i think if anything, we'll probably see Prime Trilogy. I think if they acknowledge Metroid at all, yeah. that's what they're going to do. They're going to be like, here, like Metroid Prime 4 still ways away, you know, maybe 2022, <laughs> uh-huh. if, we're, if we're hopeful. Um, but Prime Trilogy, at the end of the year, you know, I could see them doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe they do, like if they launch Game Boy or Game mm-hmm. Boy Advance or both on the Switch Online library, they might package it like that, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, they were going to do it anyway. But since, right. it, I mean, which granted, that's a lot of anniversaries <laughs> for, for stuff that's right. not Mario, not Zelda, not Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Um, where it's like, we were going to do this anyway. It just so happens to line up with the anniversary. So cool. Uh-huh. Um, I think that that's a possibility. Um, yep. I could see all that all this happening. It doesn't feel like a pipe dream IMO. Yeah. Um, but I could also see none of it happening. <laughs> with Metroid, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Gazenja Fox said, good God, you tried to get into Metroid via the original. As much as I love the original <laughs> Metroid, I would never in a million years actually recommend it. It's missing basic functionality that's pretty much necessary for Metroid videos. So Sounds like Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> such as even a rudimentary map. If you want to try and get into Metroid via the stuff on Switch at the moment, go for Super Metroid on the SNES app. He continues mm-hmm. going. Yeah, so the thing, uh, and I'll get to the other part in a bit. I knew this about Metroid going in. So luckily, it wasn't like I based my opinions of Metroid on this. Um, but you're just trying to like. I was like, yeah, no, let's just see it. where. I think it was yeah. before the SNES came. I'm pretty sure I played it before the SNES app actually came there. Could be wrong about mm-hmm. that though. But I was like, yeah, let's just kind of see what's going on. And yeah, I didn't. I think I got through the Kraid fight. And then maybe that's it. Um, so that's about halfway, I want to say. But I definitely had to like look up some maps and things. And it, it just like, yeah, it wasn't like the most fun. But again, I very much do know that Super Metroid is like the, you know, prime Metroidvania. That wasn't a pun on purpose, but there it was. Um, and continuing on. The timing seems about right for promotion for Prime 4 being ramped up again. It's likely been in development for two to two and a half years. Modern Mm -hmm. development cycles are usually three to four years. So a 2022 Mm -hmm. release date feels about right, assuming everything uh, went smooth after Restro took over, which means late 2021 seems like a good point for Nintendo to start showing the game, particularly if they link that up with a release of either Metroid five my preference or metroid prime trilogy hd which would make more sense to promote metroid prime 4 yeah i mean uh, we talked about this earlier yeah but like if anything if they do that i think that it should be more of like a in hindsight like hey remember or even prime 4 is a thing that we're working on here's prime trilogy that Mm -hmm. in in effect is kind of like the age of calamity yeah yeah yeah, where they were like we are still working on the breath of the wild sequel here's you know um, actually, okay, this is the way I would do it if I were N- Nintendo, is I would say, we're we're still working on Metroid Prime 4, here's mm-hmm. Metroid Prime Trilogy HD, give that whole trailer, and then at the end of it... Please don't just, say a target render, don't do a target render, do not do a target render CG trailer, don't. don't I don't do know that. what a target render means, so... <laughs> target render is like, this game doesn't exist yet, it's a CG thing that, like, the, like the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer of... Mm. Like, oh no, I was gonna say... I mean, I don't know. I was gonna say like a a fifteen second, like a logo something. Thing? I mean, no, kinda, like yeah. more than a logo, less than a trailer, kind of a thing. You know, yeah, but I don't know. Tar- exactly that's what that target okay, don't do, target it. don't do yeah. it. Don't do it. That's no. That's what I'm saying. I'm vetoing that. Because <laughs> like that's so or okay, no gameplay. So the game exists. 
gameplay of Samus looking around uh, somewhere and just for like if, there, if there's gameplay minutes. that exists that is done yes uh-huh. yeah. but if it's just a thing of like let's get everybody I see what Metroid, okay yeah, dude, it's like yeah. it doesn't do anything because all that's going to happen is that it's going to be freaking Spider-Man Puddle Gate this doesn't look as good right. as it did in the target render of course it doesn't because right. there's systems happening now and it's a video game that a analog stick is getting pushed forward and the characters reacting to that you know versus the 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 best case scenario as long as the computer strong enough to render this animation that was pre-programmed that's mm-hmm. what it's going to look like sort of situation it's like don't do those <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> show us gameplay so there's fun. that yep um lightning said parker you love hollow knight and you haven't played super metroid yet you need to play it um i agree i'm that's doing true. the inverse how dare you love hollow knight and i know i'm probably the worst super person metroid. there is that's crazy <laughs> Uh, they continue. I'm doing the inverse. I played Super Metroid. Metroidvania, dude. I played Super Metroid on <laughs> NSO when I first got my Switch a year ago, and now I'm making my way through Hollow Knight. NES Metroid, while it is the starting point for the series, is not the best place to start. Super Metroid is where the series hit its stride and laid the foundation for the Metroidvania genre. Mm-hmm. This is true. It's so, yeah. The Super Mario World of the Metroid. Mario As opposed 3, to what is playing that? Mario 1 or. <laughs> Honestly, Mario 3 is still a decent, like... Mario 3, what is that? No, I'm joking. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, Mario 1, on the other hand. um, That's crazy. Best game Mario 1's good, too. Mario Mario 1's good, too. It was important. Um, And it's, like, it's good for what it is. But, like, as far as just, like, if I were to sit down and somebody were to hand me a controller and be like, here's this game, I would have less fun Mario 1 by good Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I don't think Mario 1 is, like, Metroid 1. I think Mario no, 1 yes. is still a game that like can exist on its own merits. Um, if there was like an indie game in the style of that game, I think Mario 1 would stand shoulder to shoulder with that game and it mm-hmm. wouldn't feel like why is it? It wouldn't be a ukulele where it's right. like, yeah, okay, yeah. this is why games aren't made like this anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I also see where you're coming from. Like, yeah, Mario 3 and Mario World are noticeably better. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I think Mario 1 still aged well enough for it to be like, this is a game that's good. Yeah. Without the asterisk of like, this came out in 1986 or whatever. Like. Mm-hmm. Um, Rodriguez AA says, J'espère que ce ne sera pas une année de faux espoir comme 2020. I don't which, know what that means. Which means everything. No, it's, I hope that this Something is not going to be. <laughs> yeah. Do you, um, you can guess it if you want. Yeah, I, yeah. I hope that this won't be a uh, year false hope like 2020. Mm-hmm. That's all I knew. I knew the faux part. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, it's hard to say because like, I don't, I'm curious what the, in your opinion to the, the false hope of 2020 is in reference to in terms of like, is it for Metroid? Because Fan false I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. If it's like us, you know drumming it up and stuff within the community and all that then mm-hmm. that's valid you know because things but um i mean we definitely didn't get anything from nintendo other than <laughs> paper mario which you know i thought that was a thing i was wrong unfortunately but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i it's just, it's just one of those we'll wait and see you know like i i don't have any expectations at most i have hopes but i don't base my feelings on hopes in this case so um we'll just see yeah same um like when it happens it happens uh-huh. i actively remove those things from my brain of of like i mean so again, like being about it several times throughout this i am like okay that's a game that exists i wish i didn't know about it yet but like <laughs> cool yeah um i'm not gonna like uh be mad if it gets delayed or like stay up all night thinking about like but what if this and then how come that and then this person got fired and this person changed their like when it happens it happens Mm -hmm. (laughs) um that's it for our videos now we're on to the last part this is q a uh let's get into it Mm -hmm. so youtube community I didn't post a poll. I was curious to see because I did a poll the other day, so I didn't want to do one again. Um, but definitely, YouTube has much more reach with polls. Yeah, you so, got to do a poll, dude. Interesting. Um, so, but first of all, uh, Noir Lucario said, what superhero would you give a Nintendo exclusive game similar to Spider-Man on PlayStation? Uh, Black Panther. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. 
I mean, no particular reason for it being on Nintendo, but I just mm-hmm. want like Panther Team to be. Yeah. Um, or Static Shock. Oh, Static Shock is also cool. Or can I say Thor? I'm gonna say Thor. Yeah. <laughs> I like I just like Thor. That's all. I like uh, the you know Norse I don't specifically care about Norse mythology. I just like high fantasy stuff and lightning's cool and hammers yeah, are cool, like I guess. Stuff, so dude. I do like nerd stuff and he fits <laughs> in the nerd box. Also, um same goes for Doctor Strange. I would also be down with the Doctor Strange game. But Yo, I don't are think you watching freaking how long have WandaVision? we been Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I um, we haven't watched today's episode yet, so we're gonna do that oh later this evening. God, How, are you watching it? Yes, I am. Yeah. Did you watch what today's episode already? Yes, I. Did. Oh no! Don't say words. I'm, I'm not gonna say I words. Mean, I mean, I going dude, to. But dude, yeah. dude, I'm I'm what? very excited about it though. It is crazy to think I was watching. I've been watching more like MCU YouTube videos and stuff, mm-hmm. um, for whatever reason. And one of them showed that like. By this point, um, Black Widow is supposed to come out April 30th of 2020, and The Eternals was supposed to be out in November of last year. Like I fully, I thought Black Widow was originally coming out in November, and then every, and then it got pushed back, whatever, to June or something. But man, everything's getting pushed back so far, which makes sense because like obviously box offices and all that stuff. But. Yeah. Yeah. But I invest in AMC, you know what I mean? Because money. <laughs> True, which we didn't talk about that at all. We didn't talk did you, about it at did you do any of that stuff? Um, like, do you got any stonks? <laughs> I, I have a little bit of AMC stonks um, from yeah. after the fact, but I mean, it's not not like it's doing a I have a right little now, bit but... of all of the above except for Dogecoin. <laughs> I tried to get some Dogecoin, but I couldn't. So did I. So did I. I downloaded the, the only thing, option that like, I can see is Robinhood, and no, well, like, yeah, I'm not right, doing exactly, it through exactly. Robinhood. Are you yeah. crazy? So that's what, and I tried it too when it was like first coming up, you know, like beginning of yesterday, as opposed to end of yesterday, because that was a big difference um, before hmm. the Elon Musk stuff or whatever. But I, I couldn't figure it out. So whatever. Yeah, yeah. I had. So I have um, stash which is another okay. like stock app or whatever mm-hmm. and i just already had money in that like i oh, already gotcha. was, like, did nice. the like thing of, like the passive investing where it's like mm-hmm. we're going to try to find the best stocks for you and, yeah like, right that sort of thing so i just had money sitting in there and i was like mm-hmm. okay i'll eat that into the different stocks that i know we're making money actively yeah um, i've got that uh, from uh, like you know work stuff but the only one that had actual like because most of them is like Roth IRA things mm-hmm. that like you can't actually pull anything out of or do anything with. Um, the only one that did have anything is our health savings account. Um, and apparently you can use some of that. So I didn't use much, but like it was, I put like a hundred dollars towards the AMC uh, one at, it was at like $9. So, you know, cool. That's, that might end up being something if it gets up to as big as GameStop had been, then that's going to be huge. But like, yeah, I just thought it was funny that I could use my health savings account to do that because I had no clue, but it let me. And it was like, just make sure you don't need this for medical expenses. Yes. I'm like, I think I'm fine for a hundred dollars uh, yeah. <laughs> medical expenses that, you know, we don't, we're fine. Dude, so. that's like one tenth of an x-ray. <laughs> Man, it is crazy how like I had to get an ambulance at some point when I was living in Belgium and uh, the ambulance bill came in. It was 25 euros. Mm-hmm. And like, <laughs> my parents were like, no, seriously, if we were in the States, it would have been like 500, a thousand bucks for yeah. just the literal yeah. like two mile drive that the ambulance. It would be me. cheaper to get like, in, like, you know how like some cities and stuff have like, you can Uber like helicopters and stuff. You can Uber a helicopter for cheaper than, <laughs> than, than an ambulance, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. So yeah, there's that. Uh, continuing on, Cool Cool asked, I'm back at uni for my master's degree and have an online class around the time you usually post podcast questions. So in case I'm in class, I thought of something to ask ahead of time. And this was on my video. So I just pulled it from there. Uh, Do you think Nintendo shot themselves in the foot with a Mario 3D's all-star limited release? If they do something similar for other series, they're forced to make it a limited time release because of Doug Bowser, because Doug Bowser said that since 3D All-Stars is a celebration, it's limited for a certain time. So if other games aren't a limited release, they're going to be the biggest liars. And if it is a limited release, people are just going to be pissed off all over again. I think it was a mistake. No, no. Um, Companies go back on things that they say literally all the time. Um, I think it's also a question of like... um, 
uh, labeling. Like they could easily just not call something, like do something for the anniversary of Metroid, but not call it a special edition, you know, special anniversary yeah. something or other. And then, you know, kind of get around that pretty easily. And also it depends on how everything pans out when it's all said and done, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Like if we this... don't know what is going to happen on March 31st, 2020 mm -hmm. or 2021. We have no idea. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, for all we know, it could have literally just been, like, this iteration of Mario 3D All-Stars is a special edition thing, and it's going to be, like, they have the separate products available in the mm -hmm. eShop or for whatever. The same price. But, yeah, but you can't buy the, the cartridge or you have to buy them separately on a cartridge and they're like mm -hmm. $30 each. So it's slightly more expensive or like the box art is different or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like there's so many things that they could change and that's why it's limited, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a possibility that it is truly limited and they just don't do that with other things <laughs> because yeah. they've done that before. There's plenty of times where, they do special editions that are special games like Pokemon Sword and Shield. I mean, I don't know why I keep doing it. Sun and Moon were released as part of the 20th anniversary or mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 20th anniversary of Pokemon. Um, but they weren't limited, you know, like the, mm -hmm. all that stuff is like a case by case thing. I mean, it's same for like, you know, Super Curry, Mario 3D World plus Mario Bowser's Day. Fury. Mm -hmm, like yeah. that's, that's not going to be limited. So it's, right. it's a, uh, I think what it does mean is that there probably will be some other things that they continue to do in this same way. Like probably for Zelda, there'll be a thing maybe that they do yeah. a similar kind of thing for. Um, but I think they've left themselves a lot of options that maybe. I, we I don't think that this is that. not even a new thing. Right. Um, yeah. The only thing that's new about this is now we live in the digital age where everything is day and date mm -hmm. digital and that, in people's minds means that there's like a certain permanence that needs to be there um mm -hmm. because before every game <laughs> was a limited release you know like yeah. they don't infinitely print games um there mm -hmm. is always a cutoff point to where they're like all right we're done with this um and there were literally limited edition releases of the kirby 25th anniversary mm -hmm. and mario 25th anniversary on wii you know i mean even within digital stuff there's there's a degree where that's kind of like there's probably, I would guess, going to be digital games. There yeah, yeah. There's digital games that are released on the Wii U right. that at some point the Wii the Wii U store is going down. So like, mm -hmm. um, it is. I mean, it's a problem that I think needs to get a solution in the long run as more of those kinds of things happen. But um, but I don't yeah. know if it does. I don't know if it does. I think that it should. And that would be nice. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it needs to because right. there's not even a precedent for that. You know, all things up until this point in this industry have had a cutoff date people don't actively think of it like that but they all have you know like well i think the workaround in the future too honestly will be that like now that digital is the you know prime infrastructure for it or whatever i think it'll just be kind of worked into the way it works where like everything i mean we don't know this for sure but i assume the things that you own on switch will carry forward with you to the next console Mm -hmm. the same way that they do on ps4 to ps5 and you know xbox right. to xbox series x and stuff like that um so probably it'll just get inherently fixed the same way you know like apps are the same way on your phone where like you don't need to re-download it on a new thing or you know right but all that stuff all those examples that you just named there are always exceptions that's true <laughs> so it's like yeah I don't, I don't think that we're ever going to be in a place where just things always work once you mm -hmm. buy it the first time that's it um i think Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a, a, a slightly better or a worse version of what it's always been moving forward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Good question for sure. I, um, I'm very curious, especially what happens with Mario 35 and the Fire mm -hmm. Emblem one. Yeah. Like, because those, I, I'm not concerned about 3D All-Stars because I do think that it's, there's, there's just no way that they're going to be like, nah, we're, we don't want those games to be available in any form factor anymore. Like there's going to be ways to get the, that game. But yeah, I could, I just, I don't know for sure for Fire Emblem and for, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it could be, cause I don't remember the Fire Emblem logo for the, you know, for this one that we're talking about, the special edition one, but if it has a special edition thing on it, then maybe they just take that off on the eShop and it's just like different. I, 
but it seems possible that that one they really could just straight up get rid of. So we'll see. Yep, yep, so yep. there you go. Uh, now on to questions from Discord. Grimhane asked, strawberry, grape, or watermelon? Only one can remain in any form, the actual fruit, natural flavor, artificial flavor. The others are gone forever. Which do you choose and why? And to clarify, it's not one per form. For example, choosing strawberry means all forms of grape and watermelon would be eliminated. Mm -hmm. uh, I have my answer. I think I'm going strawberry. Yeah, strawberry. I think strawberry sure. is the most <laughs> consistent one across the board. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I like watermelon flavored things. I don't like, I mean, watermelon, like, no, I don't like watermelon. I, I feel mean, neutral like, about watermelon. There's itself. no real reason for me to eat watermelon. <laughs> Watermel like, watermelon flavored things. Like, crunchy I, I water. Think, I think if I never had watermelon flavored things, I would like not dislike watermelon but i i would be where you're at but mm -hmm. because i've had watermelon flavored things it makes regular watermelon suck <laughs> regular watermelon <laughs> is garbage compared to like watermelon flavored things i yep. like grape flavored things but not consistently across the board sometimes i don't like it sometimes it's like medicinal and that's weird yep um, if you asked me when i was like 11 i would have said grape Every, every day of the week. But mm -hmm. um, I think I told this before, but at one point I got, I had to get a uh, sleeping gas or whatever to get a surgery and yeah. they gave me great flavor. I and now I, that, but I, now it's like that ruined it for me. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. I like grape things fine. I like grape soda, probably the best of the grape flavored things. Yeah. But otherwise, it, grape juice is good. And like, oh, this mm. also does mean, I mean, not that it specifically matters for, I don't think either of us, but like wine is gone. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, about that's that. interesting. But wine can um, eat out of my life. I don't care. <laughs> and also, isn't there? I think there's other type of wine. There's like strawberry wine. There's a song yeah. called that. <laughs> there is like, a song called strong called that. Song called that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but strawberry, like, not only are strawberries the best of those fruits by themselves. Like grapes, grapes are good. You know, whatever. I, don't strawberries. Agree with that. I like grapes more than I like strawberries. But, mm. but at least I like green grapes more than I like strawberries. I like. I, I like Grapes are easier for sure than strawberries, just in like mentally where it's like, but I think oh peak strawberries God, I are, to, I I, so like if they were just, um, I don't know, I think if, if it was a question between there's two of them there, would just which one's better, like, I'm not going to, okay, if what I'm I mean easier, I mean convenient. Store. And if I'm in a yes. grocery store and I'm like, what am I? I would buying? buy grapes over buying strawberries. I am strawberries. buying grapes. I'm not buying strawberries. I agree. There, I very rarely am like, I'll buy strawberries. Why yeah. not? Um, but grapes, like if I'm buying, like grapes, grapes are- Grapes are really low maintenance also. I'm always like that's buying grapes. I'm like, yo, I'm getting fruit. I'm buying grapes. <laughs> strawberries are like every once in a while, I guess I'll buy yeah. uh, strawberries. Um, so mm -hmm. That's that on that. <laughs> I agree. But like strawberry has the benefit too of mind. like um, strawberry, like just straight up the fact that there's strawberry milkshakes uh -huh. for, or strawberry ice cream kind of thing, whatever, yeah, we, but that it lives within that world of things. Whereas grape thing, and watermelon, though. not really, you know? That's the thing though. If, the, if, if this question was like, you can only consume the like, I mean, which in this case it would like, it would break the question. Um, but like if I then chose strawberries and now I had to eat strawberry ice cream, strawberry milkshake, so on and so forth, I never opt for that. If I'm getting ice cream or whatever, I'm get I strawberry is literally my last option. If I'm getting <laughs> a milkshake or I, like if I'm getting a milkshake, it's like a vanilla milkshake with some other stuff in it or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or like, you know, I'll get chocolate before I get strawberry. Strawberry is like a thing where it's like there's ice cream here. The only option is strawberry. I guess I'll get strawberry. Strawberry is in the pancake tier of ice cream and milkshakes for me. I, like, I can definitely I agree so. with that. I like the con I like strawberry within the context, like as an additive thing to mm -hmm. milkshakes or whatever, but not as the like a plain strawberry milkshake is very boring to me. Yeah. Um, yeah but like true. if it's like I don't know, like strawberry and chocolate chips, or uh, that's not exactly that, but that kind of thing. Yeah. Chocolate mm -hmm. dip strawberry that definitely you know brings yes, it up yes, a couple notches. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, but then Sardi does ask. But I'd also like to know if you had to pick one form for each, what would you pick? Um, regular grapes. Um, okay. Wait, so, okay, the way that this formed in my head mm. was that we can only pick one version of, like, so once you pick artificial flavor, that's gone. Yeah, that you pick right. natural flavor, mm -hmm. but that doesn't work. 
or I guess <laughs> like if we do, we could do it that way, and then we could do like best form because like we could just eat one. And I'm saying we eat, or I'm eating watermelon. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, like I said, yeah, strawberry, um, regular, freaking. I mean, grapes, regular, strawberry, mm-hmm. artificial, eat watermelon. Um, I'm down with that. That works. And then if we do like if both options stay and it's just like was the peak form of all the things, I think strawberry normal, um, artificial for watermelon for sure for sure, and then grapes normal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There it is. Uh, Grimhane asked, "What is Duncan wrong? Why is Duncan wrong for whatever he's about to ask?" And then <laughs> later said, "Duncan, stop typing." <laughs> <laughs> no way. Uh, he- Sorry, Duncan. Apparently, you're wrong. Um, and the reason why is because because you didn't type anything. Can't be right if you don't type. You miss every shot you don't take. That's so true. What a good life lesson. That is. <laughs> um, sorry to ask. Fast foods. What's your guilty pleasure? <laughs> Probably I have facts. a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a problem with this. Like this question, like or, or like the existence of the, it's kind of <laughs> like just generally how I live my life is very shameless, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's like the backlog thing, and like that's that, like just that sort of thing does not gel with the way I live my life. Yeah. Guilty pleasures like that assumes that I give a crap about what other people think about what I engage with, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, for um, sure. I mean, like. Yeah, if if it's a guilty pleasure, then not only that you like it, but yeah, that you care. I, I mean, I feel the same way with like I don't think there's any bands like guilty pleasure music or whatever. You know, I th- maybe there's something, but for the most part, I'll just be like, no, like I don't typically listen to blah blah blah, like pop music or something. But this specific pop music thing is great or something along those lines. Right, and like the only no. like the thing that would make that a guilty pleasure is if you were publicly like pop music sucks and everything about it is garbage and you're dumb uh-huh. if you like anything that's pop <laughs> but also i really like ariana grande or whatever right? like, uh-huh. <laughs> like, i mean and like i might have people. controversial opinions on something where like i still um okay this was i remember living it so we lived in virginia in 2003 to 2004 or 2002 to 2004 um and there was a band that was very popular then I liked several of their albums quite a lot. We moved away. I'm going to get to what band it was. We moved away, (laughs) came back when I came to college in 2010, and people were like, Creed is the worst band that's ever existed, (laughs) along with Nickelback and others, you know. But people, like, hated Creed. And I was like, what did Creed do? Like, they, they were, everybody liked them. They were on the radio and stuff back when I lived here. And, you know, it was just, people didn't like them because it was within the butt rock category and stuff, which I get, and that their music sounded very samey, which I also get. Um, but at the same time, it's like, no, I mean, I liked their, uh, like, Weathered Clay, or Human Clay and Weathered, and I still like them fine. I don't, like, go out of my way to listen to them, but if I went back and listened, I was like, yeah, it's pretty good. So it's one of those, like, it's controversial because it could be guilty pleasure for somebody else who's embarrassed by it, but I'm like, no, I'll stand by those. Like, they're, they're good, you know? So, um, I feel you. Guilty pleasures. I don't know. I don't know what fast food thing that people don't like that I like. Right. I know fast food things that I don't like that people like. Like, I don't really like McDonald's that much. Mm-hmm. Like, if I have an option, I'm not going to McDonald's. Um, mm-hmm. I think for me with, with this, more the guilty pleasure is, is it's not a guilty pleasure. It's more like I feel bad that fast food is as commonplace in my life as it is. But, like, I don't know. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Because, <laughs> like, like I think, like, when I first moved, um, like, before I moved and I, like, lived with family and stuff like that, like, more family, like, my mm-hmm, aunt mm-hmm. and my mom and all that stuff, I didn't eat out that much because it was, like, a thing. Whenever I ate out, mm-hmm. like, buying food for everybody. Mm-hmm. But oh, then once yeah, I yeah. moved and it's pretty much just me, I ate out more because it's, like, it's cheaper for me to eat and just feed me than to eat and feed my entire family. <laughs> yeah, know? right. Um, but now, like, I'll, I get groceries more, so I eat out less. But mm-hmm. then there's times where it's like, ah, I'll order food because it's easier than making food, you know? Uh-huh. But yeah, no, I, I don't know. I don't know what mm-hmm. fast food, because I don't particularly like, I get, okay, so here's this thing. I was talking to, I was talking to Youth Hurt about, I wanted uh, white chocolate chip macadamia cookies. <laughs> and yep. the only place that has it is Subway. 
And I don't like Subway. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I like white chocolate chip macadamia. So I was going to get Subway because I don't want white chocolate chip macadamia no cookies, dude. So I guess Subway. Maybe Subway. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I don't have I don't have much of an answer for this, unfortunately. Um, which maybe is the, the only answer you need. That said, uh, if you ever want to buy me fast food, I don't know, buy me whatever you want. <laughs> you don't have to buy me fast food. Um, last questions. Mega Man asks... Why is the New Zealand tax such a real thing? Uh, I'll tell you exactly why. They are um, taking a lot of taxes to try to build up the army to make sure that if Mordor ever does I rise up again, thing. I knew. of course, the Lord of the Rings thing, um, you know, they'll be prepared and stuff with, you know, attack them with sheep probably is that's <laughs> the idea. It's the, I did see a thing. Was it, I don't remember where I saw it. It was a YouTuber or something like that that, um, oh yeah, because everybody was doing polls this week because apparently that's like the YouTube cheat code or something, which we've been doing it for a while and I don't think it's technically a cheat code. But um, they asked one of every Pokemon versus one billion lions, who wins? Oh yeah, this is a normal, like that's a yeah. question. Um, yeah. And so I, 100%, it's one of every Pokemon. It's Pokemon, for, like what? Yeah. Um, and like, uh, what was my... Oh, yeah, you could but, pick a team of five Pokemon to beat a thousand lions. Especially, like, well, uh, it was a billion lions, but still, here's the thing. Uh, you like, could, you, every lion to have ever existed yes, could be right. decimated by five Pokemon, <laughs> if not one. <laughs> right, yeah. And that's like, because even if the, some of the comments were like, even if Pokemon, or if the, um, the, the ways that it could go against the Pokemon is if they have PP that they run out of and then it's like death by a thousand cuts and they end up struggling themselves to death or something like that. Even but that, even that even is like, that. no, just like surf or earthquake. Yeah, you or moves, surf one time. And that's everybody, you know, or like yeah. every water Pokemon go use surf and like, Obviously, and if it, yeah, if it's more than one Pokemon, you do the Pokemon anime thing, and it's like, well, you use Surf, and then you use Thunder every yeah. lion's day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> side note. Okay, this is for like the five people that are probably still listening to the podcast. You'll get to enjoy. It. <laughs> but uh, here we go. It, at D and D, one time, like probably two years ago at this point, it was pretty early on, and my character had just learned some cantrips, which are like spells, but like really weak spells that you don't use spell slots for it. Like pretty much you don't have PP for or whatever. You can just use them as many times as you want. Um, but one of mine is Shocking Grasp, which is just like pretty low damage, but it's just like I touch something and I electrocute it a little bit. That's it. And I'm uh, like a lightning dragonborn. So like a kind of dragony guy. And so, yeah, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. There was some thing that was like under kept going under the water then coming out and attacking us whatever and i knew it was under the water and so i went to go do it and this has been i've been the laughing stock of our group mm. ever since i was like i'm gonna shocking grasp the water and went over to it and went like try to bzz. i got a terrible roll for one thing <laughs> and but our dm was like um two fish popped up to the top of the water and i was like <laughs> really like what if i'd gotten a good roll and he's like no that's not how that works in D and D in real life. Like if you try to electrocute a large body of water, that it's gonna. <laughs> it's like, so there you go. I got very made fun of for a long time for that. So that's I mean, why the New Zealand tax is such a real thing. Wattage and amps and all that stuff. But very much it does. And also the amount of stuff that's in the water and blah 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 yep. blah. Not the, the amount kind of, of like creatures, but amount of like materials yes. and whether like how conducive they are and so. Mm -hmm. Um. And then here we go. Uh, Mega Man continues to ask, when is Parker's first stream? I was going to say, actually, this weekend, I don't know that I've got a ton going on. So I might try to set something up this weekend that it probably won't be an official one, but I might do like a test one or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I don't know when that'll be exactly, but I think the easy way to do it would be just tagging in with you at some point. Um, yeah. Which, I, I mean, if you want to do, if you want to do, if weekends are easier for you, we could add a weekend day mm -hmm. to just. That, that's the thing is I don't know when's consistent for me because like some weekends, mm -hmm. like this weekend's pretty much completely free, but then other mm -hmm. weekends are completely busy. So like I don't really know. So um, we could just do weekends how I already do weekends. <laughs> Whereas like if I <laughs> yeah. feel like doing it, I guess I'll stream. You right. know. And I I wonder too of the people that watch you on Twitch, how many of them are planning ahead to like oh Thursday night I'm gonna watch AJ versus like 
he tweeted it out and now I'm going to do it. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think there's a few people mm-hmm. um, that do that, but the majority is like, it depends on who else is streaming, what time mm-hmm. I'm streaming, what game, game I'm playing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the last question, when is the Grim Hain versus Parker smash fight? Could uh, let's Grim Hain, let's do it. Let's figure it out. I guess. Figure it out. I mm. think the best way to do that so that we can plan it for sure is probably to do it on a day that you're already streaming something so that in case streaming on my setup ends up being weird that we can I think we literally do like at that case I mean if that's the case we probably just plan ahead to try to get you in on a Thursday Smash Brothers stream and then it just be like part of that Mm -hmm. (laughs) because then you could just like literally if you want to hop in do that fight and then yeet (laughs) you know (laughs) yep so there it is and you know what that's all that's all we got for today folks we talked about very many different things again if you're still uh check out those games that we talked about because some of them again i alia i thought was really really good uh a short hike was just if you got seven and a half dollars Go pick it up and play it in an afternoon. Um, that just Cyber sounds Shadow, wrong. Seven and a half dollars <laughs> just sounds incorrect. <laughs> I'm looking it up. How is it? Well, it's not going to say because I already bought it. So No, I don't mean that. I, mean, I know, like, but just the, the, <laughs> the phrasing of that. Because yes. in my head, it sounds like you're saying seven, like seven uh-huh. plus three point, you know, like that whole thing. Like, uh-huh. like a Kingdom Hearts game name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Also, I found out it is eight dollars. I was wrong. I got it you for six and a half dollars. So mm-hmm. that was the sale that was going on. But yeah, it was great. Um, and Glyph, lots of fun that comes out in a couple days. And Cyber Shadow, Cyber Shadow, it's Cyber Shadow, Cyber Shadow. Hey, see? Yeah, definitely yeah. pick that game up, especially if you like games like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Or you like <laughs> freaking, you know, you that game, mean, if you, you like see, games like it. You see but, games no, yes. like that, you know? It is true. No, and I mean, that's a valid thing to say, but it sounds it like is. seven and a half dollars. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It does not, because seven and a half dollars can mean something very different, you know? Like seven and a half dollars could mean seven plus half of seven. <laughs> I, I guess. Everybody, like, that's the question for today. Does seven and a half dollars sound like a silly, silly thing, or is AJ himself the silliness? Mm-hmm. Let us know in the comments Let down below. <laughs> oh, I, hang on. Let me check. No, it's fine. We'll do it. I was going to check the YouTube comments from the video last week because I feel like there was something in there to respond to. But I mean, sure, let's do that. Yeah, why not? We've got time. Um, do, 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 do. Hey everybody, how's it going? You know, isn't there? I don't even know if there's a thing that I can see how long this is. Um, we we started at 25 past, so it's been about two hours and 25 minutes. Okay, cool. So we're not on the super long end. No, no, we're okay. I mean, oh, again, yeah, if okay. anybody's still listening at this point, then like a couple seconds of dead air. Yeah, big deal because you guys. I'm, not, y'all I'm more so system. thinking in my head how long is this going to take to convert to video, uh-huh. and then how long is it going to take me to render this, mm-hmm. and then how long is it going to take to upload? You know, that's what I'm trying to think about. Twelve <laughs> weeks. Um, here, here are the answers from the questions from last week. Uh, Alec said, "What kind of chips we are?" Him, salt and vinegar. There you go. Mm. Um, me, ketchup. Which is not, Alec, where do you live? Because like, I don't know that that's a very, at least in my part of the States. Like, I remember that from when I lived in Europe, ketchup flavor is a pretty regular thing. Yeah, in the that's US, like a Canadian that thing. Not a, that's a Canadian that's thing. true. That is yeah. a Canadian thing too. Canadian okay. Thing. But I don't Canadian? think Alec's from Canada. <laughs> I don't think so either. Um, now, I'm so cu- curious now. Um, but AJ, Fuego Takis. That's crazy. I'm spicy, dude. They're so spicy. Oh. Um, so yeah, they're a good one. Uh, seven. Like tame spicy. You know, like <laughs> freaking hot Cheetos spicy, where it's like hot Cheetos, is so spicy, but they're not yeah. freaking ghost peppers. You know? No, yeah. Um, spicy for people that think pepperoids are spicy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seven said, me, original slash lightly salted. AJ, sweet chili. Probably the Doritos, oh, which I like that. Those are classic. Good. The best I agree of. also on those ones being like a little bit spicy at first, but then they kind of, you know, like yeah. mellow out over time. I think that that should, probably should have been where we went. Yeah. Where, like, the, yeah. 
I've been disappointed with them recently because they haven't been as much of a punch on the front end uh-huh, as I, uh-huh. like sometimes you'll open the bag and it's like, you'll look at a Dorito and it's like, wow, that's covered with flavor. <laughs> and other times you look, you're like, no, it's, it's like- This is an original flavored Cheeto. They're, I mean, <laughs> Doritos, they're not supposed to eggs. Yeah. Uh, and Parker, cheese and onion. That's pretty classic. Mm-hmm. So there it is. Um, that's that's all that there is. So yeah, let us know down below. Seven and a half dollars sounds fake or real. And we'll see you next time. We shall see. Goodbye. Bye.